Yeah! A glitter! No way! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. That's right, it's Bassmaster Live. We get started on day one of four days of fishing at the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at the Santee Cooper Lakes. We are continuing our residency here in the state of South Carolina. Had a tremendous tournament last week at Lake Murray. I don't know how we'll ever compete with that, but every place has its own uh, special charm, special things that make us want to watch the tournament. I'm sure we're going to get a, a good eye full of some big fish this week at the Santee Cooper Lakes. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona and Z. It's just going to be a different game this time around, and it will be fun to, to notice and discover the, the differences. Yeah, no doubt. It's going to be a different Santee Cooper Lakes, Lake Mary and Lake Moultrie this time around. We'll dissect kind of the differences between both lakes and the similarities and really what is different this time around from a year ago. Obviously, we're about a month later, so the fish a little bit farther along in the spawn. And I think the difference here is I think the top weights are going to look very similar, if not a little better than we saw at Lake Murray last week. But across the board, it could get a little grimy to stay consistent. But the one thing to be said, the first two days of this tournament, look for possibly the biggest stringers we may see all event. All right, definitely looking forward to that. That was some scenes from earlier. Takeoff time at the John C. Land the Third Fishing Facility here in Clarendon County, gateway to our two lakes, Marion and Moultrie. Right now, let's take a quick look at a very important race, Progressive Elite Series Angler of the Year points. Tyler Ravette, who won our first stop of the year down at Okeechobee in Florida, has held that lead for the first three events, but uh, during the first two events, during the course of the third one, Lake Murray, uh, South Carolina angler Brandon Cobb was able to uh, overtake him based on his top 10 finish there at Murray. So uh, we have got some changes happening there. Carl Jacobson hanging tight there in the top three. Welcher, Cook, Brandon Card, Shane LeHue, Greg Hackney, Lee Livesey, and Mike Iaconelli, former Progressive Bassmaster angler. In fact, two former anglers a year in that top 10 list. We, we've got uh, anglers set to go off big time here. Some of them that are we think are maybe overdue for this season. Could one of those anglers be Steve Kennedy comes in here 33rd place in Progressive Angler of the Year points. And we had a chat with him earlier today. I mean, we just came from Murray. There were fish swimming everywhere. I mean, you just knew everybody was going to catch them. Here, dude, it's hard to even see one. You get down there in that clear water on the lower lake, and there's very few fish swimming around. And when you do find one, they're usually like paired up, actually spawning. I've seen a couple of big ones, but. But I'm talking about going all day for three pairs, so. <laughs> He's a former Strike King Just, College of Bass. Champion I don't know. From right? Missouri, At the end of the day, Tony you Cuff. know, I'm probably going to go skip a Cinco under trees, and I got one area that had right some fish. I got six or seven bites in one area. South so uh, we'll get in there by 9 o'clock, and we'll stay till we catch a limit or or bus tries. So <laughs> that's what we got. Elite We're going. <laughs> We're going fishing. We're going to have fun. All right, day one. Uh, quick turnaround from last week. Still, uh, still on cloud nine from that. We got a, a job to do today. We're going to do it to the best of our abilities. There's a few fish up still. Um, we're going to go look at them a little bit this morning and see if we can land on five of the right ones. I think somewhere in that mid to upper 20s would have us uh, right where we need to be going into day two. So that's our goal. All right, the most recent champion on the Bassmaster Elite Series, Drew Benton right there, sort of a miracle on the final day, and, and uh, so great to have you with us. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored, uh, yeah, the, the Bassmaster Studios, yeah. sponsored by Marathon. Thank you for being here today. Tommy Sanders, Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukon, and Mark Zona. Uh, we, you know, what Drew Benton was able to do last week was kind of typical of what happened at Lake Murray. You could make miracles happen. Everybody had some big, big tools at their disposal. It's going to be a little tighter than that this time around, don't you think? I think so, but the real cool thing is really listening to Drew Benton right there make the comment, I need to be in that mid to upper 20s is kind of a, a good prediction of what we may see here today. Kind of the biggest difference going on on Santee Cooper Lakes than we got to see the last time around here is there are not there are a lot of fish spawning, which I think we're going to see a lot of that today and tomorrow, but it seems like the bulk of the fish have already spawned starting to get away from that. A lot more post-spawn in this event, Tommy. And really, I think this is gonna be your usual. We've covered a lot of sight fishing spawning events. And the first two days, they knock their lights off out and then you see the weights mm -hmm. kind of dip. I think this could be, at least for the guys that are sight fishing, uh, one of those typical events 
but look for big ones today and tomorrow, no doubt about it. We will definitely do that. And Ronnie Moore, I, I, you know, last time we knew where they were headed. The spawn was on, but we knew where they're headed this time. They're just, they're just going into the post-spawn phase. So aren't there some new opportunities for new guys to jump up here? Well, and the hope, Tommy, is that the water level from what our reports are, it's, it's maybe half a foot higher than it normally is, maybe closer to a foot higher in places, obviously. Lake Moultrie has not really factored too much in the last couple of Elite Series events here. Hopefully with that little higher water, it allows people to go down there. We already see a couple anglers making their way down there on the map. That's the goal because then it can spread our field out just a little bit, maybe take some pressure off some areas. But with that being said, it is around the spawn. There are a lot of fish up shallow, whether they're on the bed or just actively feeding in post spawn mode. There's probably some pre spawners that'll get caught. The one also good thing that we heard from a local is the eelgrass. There's a lot more of it in yeah. certain places. Maybe that'll make some of these fish be able to, they don't have to go offshore when they're done. They can hang around there and maybe it'll make for a fish catch in a weekend, like Mark Zona said, after they get done sight fishing. Yeah, hoping so, hoping so. Such, you're thinking about big fish big today. Fish, I know that's you know, right. This could be our last best chance to get over 100 pounds. I may, it may be slight, but it's still a really good chance. You can't trust the weather when we go up north. And Phoenix Boats has given 10 grand to the big fish of the year. Brandon Cobb is leading that with an 812. This may be the last big chance to top that. All right. Well, uh, Z, I think they're asking us for an over and under here. I guess they're talking about four days of fishing. What kind of number are you gonna you gonna go over or under? What? Tommy, it's a big day. I know you're excited. It's draft day. It's one of the biggest days of the spring today. With that being said, Guilty. a lot of excitement in the I know. I'm very nervous. Over or under 87 pounds. I am gonna go under. Under, running? I'm sticking with what I said last week. I don't wanna be called a liar at any point this weekend. So I'm gonna say over. You're such a just liar. Just slight for the <laughs> just slight for the top winning weight, over 87. Yeah, you did lie about being a lie. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm already lying this morning. Morning. Somebody's gonna whack 30 pounds and get over that 87, yeah. Okay, all right, century belts, yes, mm. no. No, no, Z? No. No, 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 century no belts. never. We'd love to say never. it, but no. Not a prayer. All right, okay. <laughs> well, let's take a look. I, I, I don't know. We just I, can't, mean, there, I, there I, be, I think we know. can all be forgiven for not being able to get Lake Murray off our minds. That oh, was one gosh. of the most phenomenal fish catching events we have ever seen. It's been 12 years since the Elite Series has been there. And Lake Murray showed out like beyond anyone's expectations. And, and the biggest show of a, of a week with plenty of shows was Drew Benton, the last guy in qualifying in 10th place and catching the biggest stringer of the entire tournament to win the tournament. Tommy, let's play the where we were right and where we were wrong. Okay. On the final day of the tournament on FS1, yes. during our FS1 marathon, all of us, we had our predictions who we were looking for to win this tournament on Murray. None of us looking at 10th place angler. Drew Benton getting it done early with a crankbait. Definitely owes his buddy Brock yes. Mosley a stake for putting him on that early morning crankbait deal. Backing it up with some huge, huge late day calls. And we kind of had it. Hunter Shryak had this pretty well sealed in the bag by about 1.30. Not the case. Those huge late day calls where fish were still moving up, putting Drew Benton over the top. One tournament, Tommy Sanders, I will never forget covering on Bassmaster Live. Absolutely. And Drew Benton, we'll be in the, we'll be in the boat with him all day. Don't, uh, don't forget that last oh, year, yeah. he went top 10 here last year. So we got plenty of reasons to be with that guy all day today. Your champion from Lake Murray, and we take you from here a little bit of an upcountry situation down to the coastal plain, lower country here for the Santee Cooper Lakes. Sort of a different setup, Z. Definitely different setup, Santee Cooper Lakes, Lake Mary, and Lake Moultrie. And what you're going to hear a lot from our anglers taking a look at this Minn Kota unlock the lake is you're going to hear anglers say upper lake or lower lake, Lake Mary in the upper lake, Moultrie the lower lake. And like Ronnie said, and we tipped on it a little bit during the Lake Murray event, a lot of eel grass in this body of water now. And here's the thing, whenever you put eel grass in, or any grass in a system where it's kind of new, it's, well, the anglers really don't know the little hidey holes and the fish are not quite used to that vegetation yet. Really one of the other things on Marin and Moultrie, not that easy to get around, but it's gonna be a lot easier this time around with higher water. And the great thing is, at least the first three days of this tournament, we're going to have lighter winds, but massive winds coming in for Championship Sunday. That is your Minkota. Unlock the lake. 
150,000 acres available to these anglers here. Excuse me, 160,000 acres available to these anglers here. It's a huge, huge place. Let's take you down. Let's get out live on the lake now in Lake Marion. Our champion from last week, Drew Benton. I don't know what fish that is. <laughs> I guess he just swam up on the bed. Ate it. Sticking in there. I don't... That's embarrassing. <laughs> Put him in the box. Yeah, so really haven't had much time to process the wind. We, we rolled right into to this week, and, um, you know, I'm super thankful for it, obviously. But, uh, but it was right back to work. Didn't really get to enjoy it much. I know I'll, I'll get to enjoy it when I go home after this one. But we still have a, we still have a job to do here, and, and uh, I'm excited about the way I get to fish this week. It's the way I like to do it, and, and uh, hopefully we can get these things to cooperate sooner rather than later, because I got plenty to go to, but I just don't want to leave these. These are kind of right here in an obvious area. But I really haven't figured out what's going on, why they're so hard to get to bite this morning. I'm actually kind of baffled by it. Taking a look at our maps of the anglers starting to spread out in Marion and Moultrie, this area right here, Potato Creek, where Drew Cook won last year, getting a lot I don't know what more attention from called. our anglers today. There's about four or five there. Last year on day number one, and that is not the case today. There is a pile of anglers in Potato Creek early this morning getting a Good look at our anglers that we have on camera here on Marion. And Steve Kennedy said he's going to keep Marion honest for the first 90 minutes. And like last year, he's going to head back down to Moultrie. See Brandon Polinick, one of the competitors, not focusing on very many spawning bass, really concentrating like the last time we were here. Brush piles, 5 to 15 feet of water out to Polinick now live. Oh, one hook. No, 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 no. It's got one hook. Come on. Please, 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 please. Bites are too hard to come by. Come on. Come on, don't you jump, don't you jump. It's not one of the magnums, but it's a good one. Feels good. Watch this. <laughs> See how easy that came out? Oh, number one. Number one. I don't, the live well is not that way, it's this way. Oh gosh. Put you on the little side.
Oh, I don't have my new boat all set up all the way yet. Oh. That needs to be our smallest. Wasn't running. Missed your first hook set. I don't know why it wasn't running. <sighs> I knew those were freaking good ones that came up on that. Yeah, I didn't see him when he ate it, but I could see, he ate it before I got to the ones that I could see, I think. Whew. Thank you. Three and a half. Yeah, that was a healthy one. Okay, let's do that again, guys. Tommy, the good news is unlike Lake Murray last week, I actually have pictures of Brandon Polinick's exact baits that he is throwing in this tournament, okay. so we can share that with all the viewers. We got a leg we're up on One last champion week. on Santee Cooper, exactly. Where we're already ahead of the curve right now to last year's champion, Drew Cook. Oh, man. You can't even see that male up there because we'll put him in the box this time for a little bit. Drew Cook making the comment there are still several six to eight pound fish up in this area that we saw him last year. What the heck happened last night? And then the stuff gets struck by lightning or something? Ray Hanselman with a five pounder has taken the lead, his third fish. So Yuki Matsushita had a five pounder. He was leading for a while. And Kukoya Fujita had two fish and was in third place right now. Century belt last time around for Drew Cook right there. Just an incredible, incredible performance. Got one of those smaller males. Last week the males were gigantic. They were, and now they're back to being yes. these little hen pecked little guys now. Steve Kennedy. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of little guys, wow, that's his bait. Did not have a fish there. Yeah, Steve Please. Kennedy concentrating on Marion. Early said he's going to concentrate in the shad spawn for 90 minutes and immediately get to the oh, lower lake. We're gonna bump that there. Right on the corner of that piling. Looking at your TH Marine weather watch for today. A little bit of fog this morning, cloudy, but light winds. Gonna have well. some storms coming in later today, but really kind of consistent weather the first three days of this tournament. I'm putting him on your side. <laughs> Pretty nice tomorrow, not heavy winds. Come on now. Kennedy has been 14th and 13th last two tournaments since 2006. He got 104 pounds and finished fourth. Wow. I promise you it was not. Did not get a bite there in and practice. Really Saturday on the Lake Murray event, was the X factor last weekend with the weather that came through and looks like that's going to be on Sunday this week, Tommy. We're going to have possibly 15 to 30 mile per hour mm -hmm. wind Sunday here on Santee Cooper, which should be a T I M E. Yeah, some T, T storms possibly mixed in there. Mm -hmm. so we'll see what happens. Or Saturday is looking to be the sunniest day, the, the, the big uh, tourism day for sure. 
That's just the weather you need when you're trying to get over 100 on the final day or trying yeah, to get the sure. over of 87. That's the weather we need. Well, there you go. <laughs> Formulas out there. We'll be with six good anglers all day today. We've got the full field of 103 fishing for the first two days of competition here, trying to make it to the weekend. you got to be in the top 50 after two days. In order to do that, there's your unofficial uh, leaderboard early on on day number one. Texan Ray Hanselman on top, strength of a five pounder. Masayuki Matsushita, second place. Jay Shakura in third place, our rookie of the year from last year. And we spent a lot of time with Kyoya, Kyoya Fujita uh, last week. Will we do the same this week? That'll be real interesting to find out as well. Douglas Poroznik, Norsetter, Iconelli, Matt Robertson, big start last week as well. Got plenty more to come on the way. The AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Just getting things started. Day one action here at this fourth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series at the Santee Cooper Lakes. Trying to trying to stay calm here. We're, we got a lot of enthusiasm though, based on what we saw last week here in South Carolina at Lake Murray and what we know that this place is capable of. We were here last year, albeit five weeks earlier than we were here this year, but what we saw was just eye popping. What a tournament for Drew Cook and Caleb Kufal. Yeah, really, Lake Marion was the biggest player last year. And some of the things that definitely go on here last year, we had a lower water condition. Drew Cook sight fishing on the north side of Marion, where Hufal was basically just fishing, whether it was a spinner bait or a jig on the south side of Lake Marion. And the one thing you could say about yes. Marion that is way different from what we saw at Lake Murray last week, this oh, is God. never a numbers lake. If you catch Oops. nine to 10 bass a day, you are going to catch some weight. And that is what we saw with all of our leaders that went over a hundred pounds last year. Not a lot of bites, but the quality definitely there. And your angler of the year leader right now in the angler of the year race in the Bassmaster Elite Series, Definitely on a roll early this season. Going to get out right now with Brandon Cobb. Was that five pound rush I off yesterday? the grass. Over your mouth, big sucker. <laughs> Number one. Trying to be quiet. Oh, it's a five I'm pounder. more than five when I shook him off yesterday. I was trying to be quiet. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything too loud. I've got a whisper. He about kicked my butt. That's the one I shook off yesterday. So I guess it does work. You can recatch the same ones. I thought it was a five pounder, not a five pounder. <laughs> it's like a seven pounder. 
kind of listened to what Brandon Cobb just said there. I've I'm been able to good. spend a lot of time with some of the best fishermen on this lake, Ken Ellis, Davey Height, and that is Santee Cooper 101, a wacky worm on isolated cypress trees, especially this time of year, those cypress trees close to the main lake. And you heard Brandon Cobb say, I shook this fish off yesterday. We talked about magic cypress trees. And you're going to see a lot of that. A lot of the same trees play year after year. Brandon Cobb hooked up oh, yet again. Big one. It's not. Nice. He's not hooked weird. I was worried. This is a keeper, though. Keeper. Two and a quarter, probably. Abby. Really, for somebody that's not been on Santee Cooper, you look at those, just those two trees, Tommy, behind, I know exactly where Cobb is at right there, behind him, there are 10,000 cypress oh, yeah. trees. Yeah. But if you look at that, those are the furthest out cypress trees before the main lake, basically a stop sign. We got to see Caleb Kufal doing a little bit of that last year. The last trees really near the main lake where a lot of fish are coming out after spawning. We'll find them later. I'm sure they'll show up. Yeah. Yeah, we did though. You're right. I was tying. I was just thinking I was tying last night, and I thought I lost them. All right. We got us two so far. One real good one. Six, seven pounds, something like that. I don't know. And one about two and a quarter. Just starting to run some trees. I didn't really want to do it early. I didn't think it would work with the low light, but it doesn't look like we're going to get brighter light. So figured I'd go ahead and start trying it. And I fished four trees and caught two fish. So that's a good sign, which we fish in some of the better trees that I've got right now. I don't know if they reload or not. I don't know enough about down here how it works. So I'm probably going to keep running them and then might refish some just to know for tomorrow if some reload. I don't know. Don't think I have enough trees to, I'll have to fish new stuff here in a little bit because I don't have enough for the whole day really. So just have to start practicing after a while. See if we can catch another one off this one. Well, that second keeper should put him right up there near that tie for third place between Matsushita and Robertson. Having a good season so far, it's Brandon Cobb. Absolutely. And you, Tommy, you know you're having a good season when you catch a six-pounder, and you're just kind of laid back, yeah. not not all excited. Just want to stay quiet there. Ooh. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, you it's see Polynix it, bait. There's three of them. <laughs> middle of your screen pulling those fish off that brush pile it's three of them at 50 foot 50 to 60. Golly. watch you'll see it pull back to the pile Polynick calling these all crappie eaters on these so brush you can piles. See them right there at 60. Uh, just lost them for a sec. 60 foot, they're swimming back to the pile. See those dots out in front of the pile? The pile's about 80 foot. And those fish right there swimming, those big, tall, bright bars swimming back to it are probably four to seven pound bass. Not probably, they are. <laughs> They are. Ask me how I know. Because I caught a seven there in practice. And that's what they look like. <laughs> Man. I don't, 
It's just crazy how stingy they're being. Look at that one rise up off of it. And we're going to be seeing some of this <laughs> in the course of this tournament for sure. Absolutely. Good stuff with Brandon Pollen. If you get a really good view of that brush pile, we're going to maps over to another angler up the lake a little bit on Marion. Steve Kennedy focusing on that early shad spawn, at least for 90 minutes to two hours, he said this morning. And then down yeah, to Moultrie, bro. he'll go. And one thing we've seen on Moultrie already, a couple more anglers than we saw oh, that was last awkward, year. But I got her. We may not go to the lower pond. <laughs> I had a bump, just barely a light little bump in the cast before. Spitting up little shad, see what they're feeding on, little bitty stuff. It looked like a four pounder. And that was awkward. <laughs> okay, let's put her in the boat. Check that out. <laughs> oh, what I do on the pliers. I had a bump. I thought it was a shad to cast before. I don't know uh, how I'm shaking now. <laughs> Call it 5-2. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> Come on, give me some. <laughs> Miracles can happen. <laughs> oh my goodness, I got one bite doing this. Only bite I got on the second day of practice. All the way over there. <laughs> but I got a bite. And now I managed to put two in the boat doing it. So. We're gonna do it for another hour now. Up shallow, up under that, up under that grass I was scared to throw under over there. Oof. Steve but Kennedy good, way good, ahead of schedule this start. morning. I'm very happy now. Made the comment. I mean, I went from, Made the comment last night. Let's go fish this one more side and get the hell out of here. To, <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt, oh. Tommy. Maybe we need to fish a few more places. You're going to mess around and find out on Marion this morning. Around. That's the way to mess <laughs> right. Away, Good stuff There's right there, Kennedy there. saying, I've got to stay near that bridge at least for the first 90 minutes on this little shad spawn. Skeeter Boats, big fish alert. Mark Menendez. Six pounds, Whoa. five ounce. Woo. He's in our top ten. But Brian New has taken over the lead. He just caught a six three, added a four one. He's up to twelve pounds, fifteen ounces. Brian New's smarting from his performance at Lake Murray. Oh, yeah. See what happens when we don't have him on was... camera day one. He catches them because he yeah. hasn't two exactly. of the days this year. <laughs> right. We've had done like that one. camera. <laughs> Yeah, there is a there is a Brian New and and Matt Robertson issue with Bassmaster Live when we got a camera and they're both it does not no, happen. It, no, it doesn't go down. <laughs> it it disappears. So they we gave him a break today. Come on, Steve <laughs> Kennedy. That's Two solid awesome. ones in the live well. Uh, Did not see that one. Ahead coming. of his plans. I really was a cast away from. Let's get the hell out of here. I hear it, man. Mm. Oh. Well, we heard a lot about the shad, shad spawn oh, in yeah. advance of this tournament. <laughs> bluegill spawn going on as well. I know John Cox will be excited about that. We don't know who's going to profit from that, but it's starting to see the picture. I hear it. You know, 
Tommy, I got to fish with Mike McKinnis, the CEO, the executive mm. producer of Bass Match Alive. What Steve Kennedy said right there, I said about 50 times this week on Lake St. Clair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Brian New, South Carolina's own Brian New, after a tough week at Lake Murray, unexpected, unexplainable. And boy, he is back with a vengeance so far early on today with 12 pounds, almost 13 pounds unofficially. Jay Shakurit. Last year's Rookie of the Year, and Mark Menendez, the veteran with a giant. Biggest fish of the day, six pounds and five ounces. Big one also for Hanselman. Matsushita, Robertson, Johnston, Cobb, and the rest in the top ten. Things are moving here at the Santee Cooper Lakes. Brandon Cobb, we're here at Santee Cooper. This is a, this lake is a shallow cover fishing lake. So some baits that I'll always keep tied on in this shallow cover situation, like Santee and Cypress trees, is a Zoom fluke stick, wacky rigged, a Zoom Z crawl to flip these trees. It's kind of a soft plastic game, pitching shallow targets, catching spawning fish you can't see, fish garden fry, fish up around that shallow wood, and something you cover water with, but make good cast and give them to bite. Over your mouth, big sucker. Brandon Cobb, if we were going to stay south and east of the Tennessee River for the rest of the year, we might just go ahead and give him the Angler of the Year title, but I think some other people want to get in on that. Just getting started here in day one, though, on the Santee Cooper Lakes. And actually, they are kind of catching them out there today. Yeah, yes. I mean, we were, we were wondering how, how fast it would be, how big they would be, but let's take a special map here, Mark Zona. Yeah, taking a look at Marin and Moultrie right here, Santee Cooper Lakes. This is Four pounders or better, and that's what you want to see in the first hour of competition. Little bit of action down in Moultrie. One angler to really keep your eye on down there. We got to hear late last night, Brian Schmidt might have figured something out down on Moultrie and got to talk to him, and he said, it doesn't look good on paper, but when I do catch one down in Moultrie, they are the right ones. But for action this morning, Lake Marion definitely firing out to somebody with probably more knowledge on this body of water than most of the anglers, Patrick Walters. We already have five fish over six pounds. Jeez. Another seven over five pounds. And that's huge that Schmidt got off to a good start because this has been his worst body of water on the elite so far in his career, never well, really getting anything well, figured out. So far. I don't know. But honestly, right now we're fishing for bonus fish. I'm gonna be fishing trees and stumps for you know isolated fish, spawners for the day, you know, throwing a worm, stuff like that. That's my game plan. I'm just trying to get a bonus couple of fish, you know. If I can get one or two, I'd be really good. Oh my God, those are big ones. Um, we just had a big one, it was probably a six pounder, pulled off. I mean, it's fishing, it's treble hooks. What can you expect? Um, but the, <laughs> there's a good bit of them there. The thing is, is just getting them suckers to eat has been the problem, and then getting them in the boats. Hey, they're just showing up. Tommy, one interesting thing that Patrick Walters said before this tournament is there are magic trees, cypress trees on this lake where you throw to one certain side and it's a term here a lot of anglers called scratch and bark, getting that wacky worm or soft plastic as close to those cypress trees as you can. But the one difference this time around with so much eel grass, it's almost like the eel grass has really spread a lot of the largemouth out here where typical trees that used to play in years past, the presence of that eel grass has basically become another magnet. Uh, it's pulled a lot of fish that revolve their life around these cypress trees. It's pulled them off of the trees where they're starting to use the eel grass a lot more. That'll be the one interesting thing in this tournament. Who can crack the code of that eel grass? The one angler that did we've seen in years past, Carl Jacobson concentrated on, on it a couple years ago. So eel grass has really changed the face of Marion and Moultrie from years past when the Elite Series has been here. It has exploded in the last in the last year, is what, as I understand it, and just yes, 
man, I'm, you, you love it when it's there and you hate it when it's gone. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Somebody, they're going to be concentrating on it. Z, as soon as you mentioned Carl's name, he popped in with a four pounder. He's got two for seven Come and a half. Now, as as soon as you mentioned his name, it popped in. Wow. I, <laughs> honest to. And if you look at an area like Patrick is in, and that's the one thing that he said in years past, there's no grass there. There's no eel grass. The cypress trees are really all they have. You know, that's that's where they stop. And, and it's just given the bass another option and it being a huge option to use that vegetation now. The secret dead stick in us. Dead stick in a swim bait. Oh, come on. Eat it. <laughs> see Patrick Walters staring at his forward facing sonar. Got to see that a little bit last year. I believe it was with Luke. Palmer here. Mm -hmm. Jump to the other corner. Getting a look at just, Drew Cook, Drew Benton. Giants in it, but it just doesn't seem to have a lot of them up right now. But when you get around them, they're pretty aggressive today. I don't think they were in practice. But anyway, it's a good start to the morning. Drew Benton saying that there was a Really, the biggest majority of spawners were, again, in the Potato Creek area of Marion. But there is the biggest majority of our competitors in that area this morning now. Drew uh, is getting a lot of attention. Drew emphasized last year the presence of that deep water going way, way back in that creek. Makes it a great highway. And with lots of little exit ramps. Drew Benton, if you're just joining with us, uh, the man who won it all last week at Lake Murray, just down the road. Had to kind of put on a Superman gear and have the best day of anyone all tournament long in order to do it. Going from 10th place all the way to the top. And, and this cloud cover is going to, should help Kennedy. I believe that's, he said he's going to concentrate really within a half mile of that 95 bridge on Marion. I think that's the 95 bridge. Yeah, it was the only, the only bridge on Marion. He said the sea walls and you see docks like that. Should the cloud cover should help that shad spawn fight last a little bit longer than if we had sunny conditions.
course, it broke the whole leader off and everything. <laughs> You don't be snapping photos of this. <laughs> Night. And you could kind of tell with Drew and Drew right now in Potato Creek that these fish not we'll see. with the cloud cover not set up very good on these spawning beds early today. Might take a little little time for them to lock on a little tighter. Another six pounder from Larry Nixon. Make a loop. All right. One Drop fish. Right through. Two, put, three, four. Five, puts him 16th. Seven times around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times back over itself around the loop. Drop your tag in back through the opposite direction. Pull it tight. You got yourself a crazy Alberta. Trim those tag ends. Reel it up. What are you rigging up right now? Uh, I am rigging up a Nico rig. A little old Nico rig and take one of these bad boys. It's a little VMC crossover ring. Take one of those. Uh, take you a big old worm. Take your big worm. Where'd my little ring go? Yeah, this is a little crossover ring. Spread that open. Comes in different sizes, so you just match the size up. Go about a third of the way up the worm. Take a little, this is a VMC a wacky Nico. Wait, a little mushroom style. Insert that. Take a little red line hook. And the cool thing with the crossover is you can go this way or you can go this way. So if I was wacky rigging, I'd go the opposite direction. But with a Nico, I want that hook point up. So it's sitting down there on the bottom, dancing around doing its deal. Rookie Kyle Norsetter of Wisconsin. Second fish over five pounds. He's jumped up to second place. All right. And if you're wacky rigging, you're right, the bait's gonna fall horizontal instead of straight up and down. So you just rotate your hook. And there we go. Time! So that'll sit, sit down the bottom. Twitch, 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 twitch. I love the difference is there. when you use a weight like that, yeah. that is all the center, center of gravity is at the bottom, right? So it's like a really low center of gravity. That causes the bait to fall fast and just straight down. If you insert like a nail weight into it, it causes the worm to want to kind of glide down to the surface because you're spreading that weight out or you're dispersing it evenly and so it, it causes it to kind of glide down to the bottom more but we're all about speed and efficiency right now there's lots of bait back here 
it's like there's more bait and back here. One here in 2020, third place with 98 pounds last year. Why wouldn't we watch what he's doing there? Also watching that guy, Brandon Cobb. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Power pole replay of the day. In case you missed it early today, Brandon Cobb making the comment that he shook off about a dozen fish yesterday with a wacky worm outer cypress trees and this fish in particular he thought was five pounds yesterday as he shook it off catching him gonna weigh a little bit more than that a little bit over six pounds big old spawned out lake marion female powerful replay of the day early here on santee cooper lakes your angler of the year leader brandon cobb we're gonna keep that one on the down low and keep his voice down yeah, it's all sneaky. Sneaky and whispery like that. Great job, though, Brandon Cobb. In the top 10 on the strength of that fish right there, we got a Chris Johnston above him, Josh Douglas of Minnesota. Now into the top 10, Robertson, Hanselman, Mark Menendez with a big fish, Matsushita, yes. Shakura, Kyle Norris set it with two big fish there, and Brian New on top. Things are happening. Day one, the Santee Cooper Lakes. Yeah! No way! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Big, huge tournament last week at Lake Murray, a, a tournament where everybody could have great expectation. Everybody could kind of pretty much expect to catch a limit, maybe even catch a big limit and get some points, get some money and so forth. It's a little bit different setup this time. Not as, uh, not as early in the year as we were last year. So you give these guys a challenge, they'll rise to it. They'll figure out a way to make it happen no matter what. And we have seen some great stuff today so far, Mark Zona. A little about, doubt about that, Tommy. We're going to get out to Drew Cook right now, who really dropped some interesting knowledge about this time of year when you're a lot later in the spawn. Number one, he said, they must have went wild here on Lake Mary and the Moultrie last week. The reason why he made that comment, there was so much fry in Potato Creek compared to last year, where it was more at the beginning of the spawn. Drew Cook working this fish for about 40 minutes. Felt him then. Yeah, it's definitely not the one I saw the first time. And another interesting thing that Drew Cook said he does this I time of year, Tommy. I don't think all right then either, because I would have seen that mark on his tail, you know? He said when you get near the tail end of the spawn, he said he rarely marks 12 to 13 inch males. He said, but this time of year, Two and a half. the tail end of the females, they will spawn with the first male they see. Number he said usually he... 1.2. Number one again. How about that? Usually at the beginning or the middle of the spawn, he'll mark bigger males, but near the tail end, he said he'll mark every single male he can find just for the simple fact that the big females will spawn with any size bass. It was really cool to listen mm -hmm. to his, and he knows. <laughs> yeah, he's the, he's the man in that category. Him and Drew Benton for sure. Hundred five plus last year for Century Belt. Drew Cook, can he repeat that again this year? It's going to be, be quite the mountain to climb, but uh, certainly one of the men for the job. As we mentioned, Brandon Palnick, ninety eight pounds last year, just barely missed his shot at a Century Belt. Definitely with him today. Getting a good look at that brush pile right there again. Five to fifteen feet of water. Had a monster practice day on Monday. One of the reasons we have a camera with him. Oh gosh. Predominantly throwing a mega bass Please jerk get bait. That. I got him. Big and magnum. Oh. See him fighting the fish, that is. It's a big return. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was bigger than that. Oh, he got the back hook. Come on. Don't do that to me. Come on. He's got the back hook. 
and the top of the head too. No, 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 no. Come here, 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 keep it, keep it. No, 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 I gotta get, can't let you get your head down. Come here. I got her. I got her. I got her. I think I got her. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, that's what they're supposed to do. Oh. Oh, I saw a sucker following it on live. If you can see it coming through the pile. Could not eye you. Thank you. Oh gosh, what's on this side? That is a mega bass, oh, cannot I eye you, jerk bait. Got a few pictures. That's how everyone I'm gonna get to supposed to be, man. Ronnie for the screen of knowledge from his practice with that bait. Oh man. Gosh, a little that bit of a hot nervous. mess on the landing. One freaking hook. Oh, I wonder if that's the one that crushed my glide. I don't know if you could see it on live, like. I don't know if they'll be able to decipher, but it was cool to watch that sucker turn and then chase it through the pile and right before it came off the end of the pile, he freaking got it. Oh boy. Oh gosh, that one got my heart pumping. That one got me, got me going when she had one hook right in the top of the head. So I think she tried to swipe and eat it head first and she like got it and that top hook got it here and she opened her mouth and spit it and then it swung and just had the top hook. Golly. Let's see if there's another one in there, huh? <laughs> I mean, that's gotta be a four and three quarter, five pounder, four and three quarter, five pounder. I mean, it's, it, that one was a healthy one. It's unique how Brandon Polnick approaches Santee Cooper, a place that's become for shallow water, big fish, any kind of vegetation you want, big heavy line, but yet every time we see him fishing a little bit off the bank, like he did in 2020 in the fall, he went up shallow just a little bit, able to catch a couple punching fish and whatnot. But really to find him fishing brush piles more frequently at Santee Cooper is always impressive. Yeah, and one of the things looking at some of the fish that he caught in that tournament looks eerily similar offshore brush piles and stumps definitely mixed in a little bit of punching and that was a weird event in a weird time in our country no doubt about it yeah. but uh <laughs> that Brandon Polinick having a huge Santee Cooper event a couple of years ago whole schedule shuffled around to fit with the uh the way that life was being conducted in that uh, year of 2020. And 72 pounds is all it took to win back then. Brandon was the guy. He said, obviously feels very comfortable here. Yeah, and that we should definitely replay some of that footage of his forward-facing sonar. You get a look exactly Somewhere. what he's focusing on. Go down. Isolated uh, brush pile and a single rogue. How about a scooter boat? Large fish mouth alert. in there. Daryl Gleason, oh. seven pounds, six ounces. Whoa, big fish of the day. Getting on up there. What do we got to have to beat last week's big now fish, Such Little lines that moved out right there. And my, probably because my bait was out there. But you see those ones right in top? There's my bait at 70, fall to the bottom. We're right on the back side of the pile. Matt Airy had a 7-Eleven at Murray. Okay. You won't be able to see him eat the worm. The pile's too thick, but. Oh, come on, on the back side of it. Come on. There we go. Popped free. You saw it pop up and just about 58 foot dropped back down in the pile. I don't know what that was. It just went flying down into the pile. That was crazy. It's like something came from up above and went flying down into it. Gosh, that thing is nasty. 
Okay. That's not what I needed to happen. That's awesome. Good look at his entire game plan right there. started we gotta get a start two and a quarter Let's see if that big ends up there Two keepers in the box for Drew Benton, our champion from last week at Lake Murray. Very relied on his versatility and his adaptability to Thanks knock so. down that win. That's what I was saying. Like, it really should just roll up. Nope. Okay, go. <laughs> yeah. Because you assume that there's a bunch of other ones in there, but. So much tackle in this boat. I have nowhere else to shove anything. It's bad. Yeah, I know. That's mostly extra stuff. I mean, when you leave home, you don't go home. You got to just bring it all. Well, I say that. I've got quite a plethora at home, too. That's my backstock backstock. It saved me though during during COVID though, like when you couldn't get a bunch of baits and yeah. stuff. Stuff in there. Yeah, I'd run into situations where you couldn't find anything, and I'd have it at my house. Call somebody up. Hey, I need to ship these. Probably make one more cast in there and then probably roll. Well, we lucked out last week, and we're going to luck out again this week. We've got <laughs> Probably the number one authority on fishing in South Carolina. There he stands right now, the former Classic Champion Angler of the Year, Davey Height. And Davey, let's talk about your expectations. It's not early in the spawn like it was last time we were here, but uh, based on what you've seen today, what do you think might go down here this week at the Santee Cooper Lakes? Well, it's certainly not surprising, Tommy, to, to see the size, the quality of fish that we're seeing here at Santee Cooper, Lake Marion, Lake Moultrie. Uh, there's always been just good average size of fish here don't think we'll see the numbers here that maybe we saw last year because we're about a month later but we're going to see some big stringers i just think some of the anglers might struggle to catch the five fish limit of those better fish but it's, it's going to be a great tournament and the, the thing that's so interesting and this is just the world we live in now in bass fishing tournaments brandon polnick fishing with the forward facing sonar the the mega live and it's it's just real he's he stayed within just a few miles of takeoff fishing brush piles offshore we normally see guys fishing you know sight fishing this time of the year or fishing cypress trees we got the eel grass is certainly a player this year but a lot of diversity just like last week is what we're seeing so far this morning Davey, if you can talk about the dynamic from last year to this year with the explosion of eel grass in marion and moultrie where there's been a lot of team tournaments in the last few weeks dominated down in moultrie Talk about what that, that dynamic has done to this body of water. In particular, we talked about it earlier today, those magic cypress trees where it's almost given a lot of these bigger bass just another object to get on. 
Yeah, yeah, Z, it's, I mean, it's great to see the eelgrass really doing so well here on Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie, like you mentioned, because that's good for bass. It's good habitat for bass, uh, whether they're feeding or spawning. It's, it's great habitat, and we will see the fishing get better and better here on the Santee Cooper Lakes in the next few years with the eelgrass. But what you have when, when the eelgrass has really kind of exploded in the last year or so, the population of fish is going to be a few years behind that. So... Those fish spread out and it makes it tougher to catch the numbers because you don't. But we will see the numbers. I've already seen it this year. Uh, I've talked to Ken Ellis and I've seen it myself also. The numbers of fish from six inches to about 10 or 12 inches, much better than they have been the last few years. So things are going to definitely get better if you can believe it here on Santee Cooper Lakes. So far, what we've seen today is basically a, it's a lot like last year. Most of the action on Lake Mary and give us a breakdown and what you predict will happen on Moultrie as this tournament goes on. Yeah, Z, I just think uh, the anglers, these lakes are so big. Lake Marion is the largest lake in South Carolina and is so big. And a lot of these anglers have only been here you know, a few times last year and this year because it had been 12 years since we had been here. So a lot of guys just don't have to go to Moultrie, but the ones that have gone down there, I think we'll see somebody will definitely be a player, a chance to win, maybe two or three people in the top 10 down on Lake Moultrie this year. Davey, real quick, for somebody that's not been to Santee Cooper Lakes, we talk about magic, magic cypress trees. You know those trees as well as anybody on this body of water. For somebody that's not been there, and, and it is the same tree, the same side of the tree, over and over and over again. What makes, out of 30,000 cypress trees in a cove, what makes a good cypress tree, baby height? You, you know I'm not going to tell you that, Z. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So it depends on the where you're at in the spawn. <laughs> It depends on where you're at on spawn. Those outer trees should be a big factor here now because we're post-spawn for the most part. Still some fish spawning. And then also the shad spawn. Those shad use those outer trees. Early in the year, pre-spawn, when those fish first start moving in, those outer trees are good. So in the beginning, going towards the spawn, and then at the end, and also with the shad spawn, those outer trees are the ones that you really want to target here this time of the year. Davey, thank you so much. You can't stump this man. He knows it all. Give me a break. South Carolina <laughs> and everywhere else, too, it seems a great Davey hype. <laughs> so let's take a look at our leaderboard. This is unofficial. Mm. Unofficial. And early on on day one, we got the full field out there today and tomorrow. And Kyle Norsetter, the rookie, looking very, very good. Couple of big ones in his live well. Brian New coming off a, a, an unexpectedly rough time at Lake Murray last week. Matsushita, Matsushita is in there in third place. Shakura, Jockinson, Menendez, Gustafson, Douglas, Kelly, and Hanselman rounding out our top 10 for now. Away! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Mincota. Cranking up the Bassmaster Live machine two weeks in a row here in South Carolina. We're at the Santee Cooper Lakes for this AFCO Elite event. And of course, the Larger of the two, Lake Marion. It's been the largest impoundment within the state of South Carolina since it was since it was opened up in uh, 80 years ago, back in 1941. And oh, and some Peter big Bell's fish live here as well. Big fish alert. We're finding. Oh, Daryl Daryl Gleason. Gleason, his second. He had a 7-6. Now he's got a 6-5. He's taken over the lead on two fish. 13-11. That's one of those. Uh, building blocks for a 30 pounder right there boy well you know 30 31 pounds on day one last time we were here i don't know if we'll get there today but that's a that's a whale of a start so to speak there's the other lake lake moultrie down before below but 110,000 acres here lake marion alone the inland sea they call it yeah taking a look at our anglers we have on camera all still concentrating on lake marion Steve Kennedy making the comment he might stick around a little bit longer today. Said he was going to make his way down to Lake Moultrie, no doubt. Not catching a lot down there, but the quality for Steve Kennedy, not getting a lot of bites in Moultrie, but has seen a few pairs, males and females spawning down there, but a few year leaders right now in the top 12 fishing down in Moultrie. When a couple of them are real I close down there together, Z. Yes, I have 
Notice that? Gussie, Carl. Definitely more anglers down there, at least early today than we saw at day one when we were here last year. So a little more attention, I believe. We'll probably end up having a camera or two down there tomorrow or going into Saturday. Yeah, Josh Douglas is in the neighborhood. And he caught a six pounder too. And he's in our top 10 at night. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of working. It's just working a lot slower than we had anticipated. Like, we have two of what I would consider the right bites. The first one needs to be our smallest. And I don't think we would be leading if we caught three more like the last one. I think there'll be some really big bags, but. I would like to catch 20 and then go check some of those offshore, like deep places just to see, which we may check anyways. You know, if old Tubbs wants to just chill up there, I'm gonna give Tubbs something he might want to eat. The pile's so high, a glide should work perfect for it. Get a little bit closer. It's almost like there's the old pile behind it and then the new pile in front of it. Like they just, someone has dropped a couple piles here. I don't see where our bass friend went though. Polinick said he has about 50 brush piles, but really only 10 of them that he considered really good. So no doubt a lot of these piles put out for crappie fishermen. And that's what the, a lot of these bass focusing on around these brush piles. Bait coming out of the pile. That's when you usually just start to see one just creep out of it. <laughs> uh, you can see, see the pile. Hey. I'm not mistaken. What is that? So there could be one behind it. Are those all like crappie floats? There's something floating there. I'm not sure what that is. You can see my glide at about 60 coming in the pile. Just hit the top of the pile. Look at that one. <laughs> Look at them all come out. Oh, uh -huh. come on. They're going back in. Had a little interest there for a second. That's interesting, man. Dirty dogs. Dirty, dirty dogs. I want that one that followed my jerk bait in. There's like all these little white. They gotta be like little crappie float bobbers or something or like something that they marked them with. Kind of watch the rotation of baits that he goes through, a mega bass jerk bait, his glide bait, then he kind of saturates it. So I'm rigging up a Nico rig earlier. said roll up 
hit it with the jerk bait, they're either going to bite it or they're not. And if they don't bite that, they're not going to bite anything. Look at that one swimming out the front side of it. Right at the top of the pile. A big pile. Gerald Gleason caught number three, small one, pound and a half. He's over 15 on the day, though. Holds the lead. Todd Auten with a five and a half pounder. His first fish. Hmm. Interesting. Give it one more, one more glide. Only two anglers in our top ten with a limit. One of them was our reigning world champion, Jeff Gustafson, sitting in fourth place now. I heard the doc talk that people were worried that not the full field, in fact, a good number may not get limits today. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, look at him! I, oh, look at him. oh my gosh, he is on it. He is on it. There's two of them. Please eat that. Please eat that. Oh my gosh. That thing was big. Probably see him come out of the pile here in a second. Look at him. Look at those two. Oh my gosh, they're so big. You can see that one wagging. Oh, come on. Just eat it. He's not going to eat it. Look at him swimming. You can see his tail. Gosh, that is a, that thing is big. Holy cow, that is a big one. Look at him swim back. See his tail kicking? Oh my gosh. I think that's an A plus. I don't know. There's two more with him. Golly. Everyone at home was like on pins and needles. Full clinch. <laughs> Gosh. We're gonna have to check this this one again. It's like all of a sudden you just saw him just start easing on up there. Just creeping on it. But I mean well, usually it's like can... first cast or Nothing, I, from what I've seen. He can draw him on that glide, but can't too far quite right get him to time. commit to it. Such what you were talking about there, I got to talk to Seth. Meal. I have never heard Seth as confused as he was about a body of water. It took him three days of practice to catch a five bass limit here. And that that's one, just one of the things that, you know, we've talked about it, Tommy, that you see on Santee Cooper, I've taped a lot of shows here and we've covered a lot of tournaments. Man, it looks phenomenal at the end of the day. It's just really hard to get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's unanimous. They're just not going to catch numbers here. Not like we saw last week. And so far today, if you're up in the swamp, it is not playing on the north end of Marion in any way so far. It's fun to watch. I mean, I feel like 
I need to watch these gamer shows, you know, to figure out how to commentate on that a little more intelligently. Back over to Brandon Cobb. Tell if it's a good one or not. Not bad. It's putting out shad. Quit spitting out your shad, buddy. Look at all the shad in his mouth. More in the water. He's lost like quarter pound. Pretty good one. I don't want that good in my live well. It's already hanging out of his mouth. Spitting out shad. Happened to be able to get a shad spawn going, but I guess there's some shad spawn we can't see. Pretty good fish, three and a half maybe. Put him in here in the better side with old big boy. <laughs> Get him up near the top I've five. Seen shad, but I, I actually had no idea there was even a shad spawn going on in this area. I haven't seen them, hadn't seen the birds, but he was clearly eating some shad. Just throwing a zoom fluke stick with a tail broke off. Probably could leave the tail, but I like no tail. The slow grind. This guy gets it figured out on northern swing at the, the St. Mm -hmm. Clairs, the Champlains, and the St. Lawrences to oh, end the season. He'll yeah. be one that we'll think about for Angler of the Year because he does oh, yeah. so well starting out his season in the southeast, at least the first half of the year. We're thinking about him for Angler of the Year now since he's the leader, of course. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Having taken that over last week at Lake Murray. He's the man in this part of the world, that is for sure. Brandon Cobb going to move up into that top 10 as Hooch just explained to us uh, when the leaderboard update for right now Daryl Gleason man from uh, North Louisiana Toledo Bend area guy on top with 15 pounds three ounces a healthy lead ahead of the rookie Kyle North setter Brian new in there as well we got more to come from the Santee Cooper Lakes stay with us the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Yeah! That's the way to start right there. I honestly don't know <laughs> why Santee works so well for me. Uh, I've only been here twice, and I finished first oh and third. God. And I would like to keep that streak going, you know, at least an average of second, which means I have to finish second or better this week. Uh, I, I don't know, I just, I feel like I understand the way that these fish migrate um, and move around. And I think one thing is, is that I've kind of just ident identified areas that hold fish and I just stick to those. Uh, rather than getting super spread out, uh, I kind of just try to dial in smaller areas rather than getting stuck running around all over the lake. It's that split second that it takes for your brain to register that you have a bite, right? Hits your fingertips, however long that takes to travel to your brain, register that you got a bite, that's the moment we're all addicted to. Well, there are horses for courses, as they say. This is, uh, he's one of the horses for this course. Brandon Polinick, you think about him also at, oh, it's like Sam Rayburn and the St. Lawrence River. It's just, it just kind of fits in really, really well. This is a place where they're not gonna catch a lot of numbers, but your expectation to balance that is it could be one that's bigger than seven pounds. Daryl Gleason has one of those to be at the top of our leaderboard unofficially right now, see? Yeah, and the one thing we're seeing transpire, at least on our maps, a lot of your leaders on the south end, very popular areas of Lake Mary and we'll kind of vaguely describe where a lot of the leaders are at here on day one, but it seems like the south side area that we've covered in years past on Mary and playing early here on day number one. And you know, and granted, I think a lot of it's been time of year and I'd like to talk to Davey about this. So many of the folks that help us in tournaments 
every time we've come to Santee Cooper, guys like Ken Ellis. Every time we come here, though, even if you watch Polinick on these outer brush piles that he's fishing, he did some of this in 2020 when he won. You don't see massive, you know, like other bodies of water that we go to. When they get in that mid-depth range, 5 to 15 feet of water, you don't see big schools. And again, a lot of that's time of year. But uh, a big wolf pack on Santee Cooper from what we've seen in years past is two to three bass. Like, that's a big pot of that's fish. That's a pack. Oh, gosh. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, my gosh. Did you see him come out on it? Come on. Come on. Oh, get he's going to get it get this it. time. Got him. Yes. He got it. More of that, oh, Tommy that Sanders. <laughs> it is. Oh my gosh, and she is wild. That was amazing to watch. Uh-uh. No more jumping, please. No more jumping, please. Yeah, I knew you were about to freak out again. I already had my button clicked. This one's mean. She's got a bad attitude. Come on. No, 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 no. No. There you go. She jumped again for you, Bowman. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come. come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh my gosh. Dude, this fish has got is so mean. Glad well, she's got more than one treble. Oh, come on, come on. Oh gosh. Come here, it's a big one. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Open your mouth. Uh, Oh, gosh, I'm shaking. Look at how freaking crazy that bass is. Oh, God, I can't even hold my pliers. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh. It's the juice right now. Oh my gosh. Look at that thing. I think you've seen some battles. So cool. That sucker might be pre-spawn. That's a big one. Really want you to watch his jerk bait on that mega live. It actually appears he's Maybe got it to a slow that. sink. Watching that thing. So here's what happened on that one. I was coming up to the pile and I got to it and I was trying to twitch it up and I hit the pile and then I jerked my bait flew out of there and it triggered that fish, right? It thought that, that something was fleeing away and I saw him coming out of that and then he got up behind it, but he wasn't that aggressive. And then I just kept twitching, twitch, 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 and we got him. I mean, mm, mm. Nice thanks. Gosh, that's freaking awesome. I mean, come on. <laughs> the fact that they could see that happen, that was so much better than the first one. That was glorious. <laughs> glorious. Glorious. Oh, I should retie. Another five, I guess. Oh. That is incredible stuff from Polinick cameraman Brian Evie. Oh, him and Kyle are on the same page. Take a look yeah, at how he so has that jerk bait so weighted. Endorphins are on high. Oh my gosh. I mean, yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> like, I can't hold still. I look like I got Parkinson's. Heck, I might. My great-grandma had it. 
my fishing just makes it worse, I guess. Oh, gosh, that feels so good. Like, after we ran those first piles this morning, and I was like, oh, these are gonna be the juice piles, and there did not get a bite. I was like, I was like, oh boy, this is gonna be a really, really long day <laughs> with a camera in my boat. <sighs> yeah. I mean, that should give me a raise right there. That was amazing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. You know what would be really cool is if I could ever catch more than one bass out of a place. My gosh that felt so good that was incredible and to watch like the entire thing happen like, just just how it happened was so cool like you know you always we've always talked about for years how like speed is a trigger mechanism that proved it right there look There's still a big one sitting right there at 63, 64. Tommy, that is the addiction of forward-facing sonar Ooh. right there. Well, you really could see the that, fish's tail when he made that last move, right? To get, yes. up, to, to get up and grab it was just, an, in three years, you'd be able to count the scales on these things, I guess. You know, it's just we need to such an advance. Replay that entire fish catch front to back where mm -hmm. you watch where mm -hmm. he talks yes. about getting near the pile draws the fish and you could tell that suspend strip he has on the front of that mega bass canada that it, it has a slow sink to it which you see with a lot of the really advanced forward-facing sonar anglers that was awesome that is yeah, that would, phew. that's more than five too i think that was an old warrior. That yeah, fish. yeah. That was, he might have had enough chunks like a, out of him. He was down to five. That was an old seven-year-old swamp buck right there. Mm. Look who he supplanted in third place, who he fought with in 2020, Carl Jacobson. Okay. Let's show that full catch over again. Kind of keep your eye at the brush pile in the middle of the live screen. You're going to see his jerk bait come through it. Look at him. Look at him. There's his oh jerk bait gosh. right. Did you see him come out on it? Fish is on it, coming up right now. Come on, come on. Get it. Get it. Got him. He got it. Oh, that's a bass. That is the juice is. oh my gosh and she is wild that was amazing to watch uh-uh no more jumping please no more jumping please yeah i knew you're about to freak out again i already had my button clicked this one's mean she's got a bad attitude come on no 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 there you go she jumped again for you bowman Come on, 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 oh my gosh, this fish is, God, is so mean, glad she's got more than one treble, oh, come on, come on, oh gosh, come here, it's a big one, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Open your mouth. Oh. Gosh, I'm shaking. Look at how freaking crazy that bass is. Oh god, I can't even hold my pliers. Oh my gosh. Oh. Gosh. 
Nice oh. catch right now. Carl Jack have just caught a 480. He's up to 18 pounds in our oh, yeah, that, new leader. Oh, wow. Seen some battles. So Shaking cool. all over, Brandon Polinick. What a fish catch. Oof. Worth a second look. Absolutely above and below the surface. Good stuff right there. Daryl Gleason. Well, we just heard from Pasuch that Daryl Gleason has been supplanted in the lead by and Carl <laughs> Jockinson. We'll see that reflected the next time we take a look at that. And now board. Kyle Norset over the six pounder. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're catching him faster than we can string him here, as the old saying goes here. Such is excited, Tommy. He he's is. so excited. He's, he's, he's shaking, too. Oh, Look man, at him. It's Look going. at him. He's nice shaking like a leaf. Such just caught one. <laughs> hey, we're going to shake loose for just a couple of minutes here, and we will be right back to the Santee Cooper Lakes for you with Bassmaster Live. Yeah. A quarter. No way. Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minkota. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here at the AFTCO Bassmaster Lead at Santee Cooper Lakes, Clarendon County, South Carolina. Day one here. We've got six anglers out there live with cameras, and we've got some of the best anglers on Santee Cooper to pick from storyline wise. And that brings us into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge. And kind of before we get too deep into this event, we want to look at how good of a body of water Santee Cooper has been. When you put it in perspective, it's a great body of water, just like Lake Murray. But if we're comparing the two back and forth, it's going to be hard to do so. They're two different places, two different stages of time. But the deal is historically, Santee Cooper is one of the best lakes of all time, especially when it comes to big bass. And looking at the couple anglers in our field who have Century Club belts at this body of water in 2022, we know about Drew Cook and Caleb Kufall, 105 pounds, five ounces for Drew. Caleb Kufall, 103 pounds, one ounce. Those were first and second. But Steve Kennedy, he also has a Century Club belt here from 2006, 104 pounds, two ounces. And that didn't get him close to the win because Preston Clark back in 2006 had 115 pounds. That once set the all time weight record before it, it, it eventually got eclipsed. But looking at lakes that can compare to Santee Cooper, there's a short list of lakes that could possibly deemed bigger and better than Santee. And that would be when we look at the Century Clubs, how many Century Clubs that ha have happened at different lakes. Falcon Lake has had 15 different Century Clubs, and that's in two different visits. One in 2008, one in 2013, 15 different Century Club belts through those years. We could have had even more. I believe Davey Height missed the top 12 cut back in 08 at Falcon, and he was on pace for 100 pounds as well. So Falcon is a special place, and we've been there a few times. Lake Fork just past Santee Cooper last year when we had four anglers break the century mark. We've been there four times, nine different century clubs there with Santee Cooper. This is our fourth time for the Elite Series being here. One of those was in the fall, didn't break 100, but the other two times we have. We'll see where we get, how close we get to 100, but when it comes down to it, if it doesn't break 100 this year, we still need to honor and kind of respect Santee Cooper for what it has done in the past, because it's the third highest Century Club Lake we've ever been to. Who knows about So we get back out on the lake with Good Brandon stuff right there. Ronnie, good stuff. I know we're going to probably be able to show a little Polinick bait maybe after our break. Send us some pretty amazing pictures on Monday of his practice. Reason we got a camera in his boat called a little bit of an audible. Had a huge, huge day one of practice. Catching him exactly like we're seeing today. Keep doing it. And I need a little sun. I think more fish get up here if it's a little sunny and the fish hang a little tighter to the trees. Obviously still own a few of them. The one thing that concerns me is I think two out of the three fish I've caught were fish I shook off in practice. I didn't shake that many off. So I don't know if we're going to run out of fish. I'm trying to fish some trees I haven't, I haven't even fished these yet. This is the first day I have just to see. Get off there. Well, the sight fishing game has been a lot slower Ooh. than Drew Cook and Drew Benton felt they were gonna Really light them up here this across morning. Those definitely. And go a little ways around those scattered ones on that point. 
definitely been affected by the cloud cover. A lot of those fish should set up a little bit tighter as the day goes on. Stay, not run around much, stay close, fish essentially everything. I think there's, there's enough fish scattered to where you're better off just kind of hitting everything than trying to, this guy's gonna run me over, um, hitting everything than trying to run around and hit specific trees. If, if it gets later in the day and I'm not catching them, then I've got some I shook off, I'll go fish those specific trees. But to have enough for three, four days, you got to uh, have to catch some that I didn't shake off, essentially. Any one of them got fish on it, though. I didn't like the eelgrass around the trees because it makes it a little more, I mean, it's not as open, but I actually think some of the better fish I've caught and shook off have actually been on trees in the eelgrass. So we might start kind of focusing more on that. I've got one area there, back there that's got a bunch and I haven't fished it yet, so we'll probably try it in a little bit. Also hooked a giant catfish, I think, a while ago. I don't know. It was either a 17 or 18 pounder or a catfish. Came off the. I didn't hear anyone talk about managing fish last week. Everybody was. <laughs> they were in a good supply. One coming behind it. Uh oh. I don't know where he just came from, but he was swimming at a good rate of speed. And I can't see my bait anymore. Unofficial leader, rookie Kyle Norsetter, just under 20 pounds. Got to ask him what his feelings about the oh, yep. there he is. departure of Aaron Rodgers, Tommy mm -hmm. Sanders. Yes, that's right. <laughs> know, that, know that Caleb Kufal and Pat Schlopp are the only Wisconsin humans that don't like football. <laughs> <laughs> How do the Chicago oh, people feel about the, uh, the where yeah. Aaron Rodgers feel, wound up? The Chicago the, the Chicago people, people feel real good. In fact, there was a celebration <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Come on, get that, get that, get that. Oh, that second one came and they got way hotter on it. Oh my gosh. Come on. There's two of them right there. That's how much line I had out. I didn't even reel. <laughs> I had that much line out. There are magnums in there right now. Like, there's a whole school of giants in there. Oh, I'm like, why are we getting so close? Yeah. Those didn't drop. Other thing to watch with Polinick, it almost seems like each one of these piles that he's running this morning, I think he's fished probably five or six different ones. The first couple casts seem very, very key on each pile. And there's several good ones in there. I didn't, I only saw one that was like a really, really big one. The other ones look like three to four pounders. When that second one came up, it was like they both were like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm gonna eat it. No, you eat it, I'm gonna eat it. No, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> Definitely did it on purpose. little surprised on the, the Patrick Walters. Yeah, I was just thinking that, man. This morning. Slow, slow, slow. Patrick kind of thought he could catch a limit on the upper lake, then move down to Moultrie as the day has gone along. Not the case so far.
interesting Brandon Cobb, your Angler of the Year leader. I asked him how much experience he's had here. Get ready for this, Tommy. Brandon Cobb lives in South Carolina, fishes obviously Hartwell and Murray a lot. He's only fished two tournaments on Santee Cooper. What? And those are both the Bassmaster Elite Series. He's never fished another tournament here in his life. That's unbelievable. I mean, I would I would think since 2006, anybody who's into tournament fishing would have right. made a yearly, you know, pilgrimage at the height of the spawn. It, he said he would he would come down here and sight fish, and that is the only time he would ever come to Santee Cooper. Caught, Did wow. not fish other events here. Kind of was really surprised by that. You know, for our younger viewers, Ronnie, that 2006 tournament that Preston Clark won, Tommy, you and I were at mm. that event. It was insane. Every 10 feet, it seemed, there was a four to six pound bass locked on. Unbelievable. This is within 100 yards of the takeoff. And we had a decade, our crew at that time had had an experience like that 10 years before that on the FLW uh, with uh, Jeff yes. Coble. And he set a record, it may still be the record uh, for four days of fishing. It was. It was amazing. You hear that when a wave comes up, and that was one of those weeks that the, the wave came up on both lakes. It was Marion mm -hmm. and Moultrie. And, uh, I've never seen that many five-pounders locked on a bank. Mm. That's why it kind of goes to show when you when I did the screen of knowledge with the, the lake comparisons, you can have lakes in Texas, lakes in California, and it's when, if you hit that lake on a given week when it's at its full strength, where do those lakes sit? And Sandy Cooper's in, in the top 10 in, well, the, in sure. the world of like, you know, when you hit it on its week, it's hard to mimic that. Mm -hmm. What you see, what you experience, what you catch hardly anywhere else, uh, especially the way you do it. This being a notoriously shallower place than some of those other ones listed on there, like Amistad, Clear Lake, you know, uh, the Falcons and yeah, things like that. Shell or the Falcon, too, yeah. But even last year when we had two century belts, first two days we had 74 limits and 71 limits. It wasn't that great. We had more weight the first two days at Murray than Santee Cooper last mm -hmm. year here. That's the, but it's the same type of thing in Florida. You're gonna have those guys catch a, a big fish and, and have 12 pounds. You know, they have a six pounder and they have 12 pounds for a, a limit or they only catch four. That's But the, it's Cooper, the top yeah. weights, but you'll have those lakes like Champlain that maybe don't put out the highest top end weights, but through the field, yeah. you'll have uh, some big weights. Yeah. That's kind of what Murray experienced last week for us. All in all, there's been plenty to, to gawk at today on Santee Cooper, that is for sure. They're catching some good ones, and we are seeing big ones as well. Kyle Norsetter, Carl Jockinson got to spend a couple of minutes on top of the leaderboard before <laughs> yes. Kyle caught his, his third big fish there. He's got a limit now of almost 20 pounds. Carl Jockinson, Daryl Gleason, Brian New, Brandon Polnick, we saw him, man, Brandon. Great day in the boat with him so far. I hope to see more of what we have seen with him so far today. Our world champion, Jeff Gustafson, Webster, Cobb, Matsushita, and more. And more to come from the Santee Cooper Lakes in Hour 4 Fishing. Yes! Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Lots of history in this place. Had a lot of uh, three-day tournaments, invitationals with the Bassmasters back in 94, 95. Usually took around yes, 72, yes. 75 pounds to win that. Later, the tour came here in 03, 04. Uh, Larry Nixon, who's in the field today, finished third at one of those events. And then the big blowout in 2006 that really, really caught everyone's attention. Kyle Norsetter, though, some rookies, some great rookie performances so far, including a win on the Bassmaster Elite Series this season. Kyle Norsetter setting the pace so far today with Carl Jockinson right behind. Matt Robertson moving up. Matt Robertson started off like a house of fire last week as well. Daryl Gleason having one of his best efforts on day one. But look at our Mercury move of the day, Z. Exactly. Taking a look at Kyle Norsetter's day so far. Mercury move of the day. I'm talking about a 
dadgum Wisconsin cheese whiz right here with a lot of room like that. to grow. Has a couple fish really under two pounds. Three good ones to anchor his bag so far unofficially. 19 pounds and eight ounces. And looking at our mapping right now, Cal Norsetter really has been left alone so far this morning. Get, seeing some action, though, a little group of anglers in the southwest side of Lake Moultrie. Definitely going to want to take a peek at that sometime during this event. But as always, a lot of the action in usual areas on Lake Mary. And that is your Mercury move of the day. Going to get back on the water right now with your Angler of the Year leader, Brandon Cobb. It's pretty cool having all 10 on a map there. Our, our current top 10. I like that. A little big one. He'll probably keep, but that's all he is. He was like nibbling. He wasn't getting it. Could tell he wasn't very big. I want to hit his gills with the hook. He's not hooked that deep, but I mean, he's just in the roof of the mouth, but it's like near his gills. Little bitty guy, but that is number four. Pretty sure. Yep. yep. He's gonna have to go, but. Mm, pound and a half, maybe. Oh, don't put him in that side. That's the good side. It's a vast array of sizes of fish on these trees. Vast. <laughs> John Cox just <laughs> caught his first fish. Of course, it was a five pounder. Wow. Yeah. Kind of had him figured to be a bit of a player in this one. He may yet be. I wasn't planning on it, but I got to throw my top water by those, those old dock poles just to see. Just to see. And we'll go back out, fish some brush. Kyle, can you hear me? I'm gonna come back out and fish a brush pile over there. So if you guys kind of stay, just stay that way. I'm just gonna swing in here and swing back out there. I just don't want everyone running it over. Patrick Walters still hanging in Marion today. Asked him if he would keep the canal in between the lakes. We've seen Patrick Walters spend a lot of time in that canal between Marion and Moultrie and said he's not gonna concentrate on that too much. There's a lot of current ripping through there. They're definitely pulling a lot of water right now with Dude, having nothing. high water Somebody conditions. Gone. They're gone. Shut up! <laughs> well, Kennedy's Laughing having a time today. He is. He is on fire. Get mad at a woodpecker. Should have known a, do a walkway that's 400 feet long is going to be pretty shallow. Put this up. up. 
Gosh, that sure looked like one behind it. I'm fixing to go, go, go. I gotta dig out a buzz bait. Something to throw. I don't have as much confidence in that swim bait around That's here. That's probably also just my, my eyes playing tricks on me because I want to see it. A swim bait or a buzz bait. Jeez. My popping frog. Trying not to hit the dock, but. Kennedy has made it down to Moultrie. Should look like one sitting by that pole. Zero. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Wacky worm. Yeah. <laughs> I lost a six pound. Six pounder on a jerk bait this morning on a shad spawn. Only bite I've had. Here's our first bag over 20 pounds. Matt Robertson with a 412 to finish it off. He's got 20 pounds, eight ounces. Wow. A couple of five pounders, one's a five and a half. He's still got a one four in his five fish. 25 plus on day one last week. That's what I thought. He's been on that kick of big fish at the Classic. He just couldn't muster up a limit. It was hard enough as is, but he would, yeah. I think he had seven bass for 25 mm -hmm. pounds for the yeah. three days there or something like that. He had the right quality. And he is in that group of anglers down in Moultrie that are got three or four out of your top 12 right now coming out of Moultrie. Yeah. So a way bigger player this time around than last year. Feed me a worm, Brandon. Feed me a worm. I'm 10 pounds and old. I need a worm to eat. I've been swimming around the swamp for many years. I'm fat and lazy. I have one eye. I just can't eat the glide. If only that really worked. <laughs> hey, get off my brush pile. There's not a bunch more swimming around. This thing's nearly Walters with bucket was bucket eight, right, Ronnie? Uh, as good as I got. I yeah. think, let me see. Yeah, that bucket, he's 16th in the AY points, right? Yes, so bucket A. So was he the, was he the top? Cobb was at 22%, Walters was at 19%. Mm -hmm. Right, near the top. Cox and Hackney were at 12 and 10, respectively. Those would be like small ones following the glide or something. It's kind of hard to tell when it gets up. Shall Cook was also there at 10%, so mm. it's kind of a who's who so when you good. get to bucket A, you start to get to the middle of the season on. Oh, come on. Get Nico. You know, look at Kennedy on the north side of Moultrie. You could tell it's, that's our, really our first look today okay. at the lower lake. Service kind of see how bad. clear that water is. Tommy, I got to give you a quick Moultrie story real quick. You, yes. you got you to gotta hear this. Okay. So Davey and I were taping down there uh, two years ago, right in that area that Kennedy's in. Fish were kind of getting up on beds and blah, blah, blah. And there was D. Wayne from South Carolina was locked up on a uh, on one on a bed and he was sight fishing it. We were taping and he finally hooks this bass and he short lined it and I started yelling, swing it, swing it. And he did and oh. his rod exploded. Oh, no. no. <laughs> How did you feel yeah. about that? And it, he went, he went into a rage 
like I have never, <laughs> no, like I have seen before, actually. He went and, tour, and, I, and we did. We went over and I gave him a new rod and reel. For oh my God. So great. You do that a lot? <laughs> Jump, it, was, jump. Uh, it was a spectacle, <laughs> the best way to put it. And when I say his rod exploded, it exploded in 37 pieces. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you just kind of got caught up in the mo moment, didn't you? And so I did, did. Yeah, I did. So did he. That's a good Moultrie story. It was, it was fun. Fifty thousand acres of water in Moultrie versus one hundred ten thousand in Marion. That maybe a gall. Hey, you were right saying there. that, Tommy, when we were talking about our preview, oh, no. the hundred and seventy thousand acres that these two lakes make up, but we really haven't had all of that at our disposal the last few years. Only just one or two anglers even venturing to Moultrie, yeah, and it's so not popular. We haven't got the no, chance to see a first. factor, no, and this this might be the year with the water being a sl tad higher. Might be a big one. That is a big one. That was chasing it out of that pile. He's just staring at it. Still staring at it. He's about right under the boat. Gosh. Yeah, that was a big one that came out of that little tiny pile right there. Third place, Carl Jockson just called up a pound to get to 19 even. And Robertson called up to 22 pounds, four ounces. Can't keep our eyes off that screen, what we've seen so far. Brandon Pollock right there. Did some good stuff so far today. Matt Robertson, the Kentucky Wonder, on top of our leaderboard right now. First man to get above 20 pounds or to get to 20 pounds this time around. Kyle Norsetter sitting just under 20 along with Carl Jockinson. Then we drop down to Daryl Gleason, Brian New. It's Brandon Pollock hanging into our top 10 very well. Brandon Cobb, we're with him all day as well. There'll be plenty to see from those guys. Gustafson, Johnston, and Webster rounding out our top ten in the fourth hour of fishing. One of the most amazing things about this classic is the fishing freaks that showed up here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at that crowd. It is for the fans. Blast off, there's all the media, the fans, family, you're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. This is a giant bass! All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Gussie gets it done! And oh, Canada, you have a Bassmaster Classic Champion! Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. We move from uh, higher ground or higher water, so to speak, down to the low country, the coastal plain here for the Santee Cooper Lakes, legendary for big bass, and that's the site for four days of fishing, the AFCO Bassmaster Elite here. Our full field is out there today and will be out there tomorrow as well, trying to make it into the top 50. We've seen some good stuff today for sure. Boat with six anglers all day long on this day. We'll be tomorrow as well, and then we'll Jump that up to that number up to 10 for the final two days here. Seven hours of coverage for you each and every day. We got it covered for you. Let's get out on the water with Drew Cook.
Oklahoma, even though there's clouds, you could not ask for better conditions with the light winds today for doing what Drew Cook is doing, but it's been relatively slow so far. So last year here, whenever I won, that w what we had was the first big wave of fish moving up to spawn. Um, and you know, they were coming throughout the event. You know, every day I'd find new ones and uh, you know, and that was, that's the only w reason why I was able to win sight fishing um, was because new fish moving up every day. This year, because we're a month and a half later, um, you know, we just came off of a new moon. If we had a moon, uh, you know, this week, I wouldn't, I'd feel a lot better about some fish moving up, but we're fishing for what's left. What what spawned on the new moon last week while we were at Murray? That is that is what's left up on the bed, and once they're gone, I don't. I mean, there might be a few trickle up, you know, one or two, but it's not going to be, you know, like it was last year where you just put the trolling motor on a hundred and went. And uh, once these are gone, these are pretty much gone. But I'd still like to to try, I think that somebody, you know, could catch a, a really big bag today doing this um, and then just kind of have to maintain a little bit and, and do pretty good. I don't think that the, uh, the winning weights will be as good uh, this year. I mean, I say that, I don't, from what I saw a little bit of practice, um, I don't see it taken 100 pounds to win, but uh, you know somebody that figured out that offshore grass deal um, would wouldn't surprise me if they won and, and kind of blew it away at that. It's so strong. I think it might be a twig and Spanish moss actually on this one. Nope. Oh. I gotta go try to get it. One thing that Drew Cook and Drew yeah, Benton the, said, these areas that they're, these areas they're sight fishing in, Tommy, that they cannot get bit just fishing. We got to see last week, a lot of guys that were sight fishing could get bit in between beds. Cook and Ben making the comment, there is no reason to even cast, even though they do. They said it is so hard to get a bite in a lot of these lily pad fields where you think maybe you can plink one here or there. That has not been the case in Potato Creek for Cook and Benton. Well, you can understand why Cook would still, knowing all that, still commit to it. It's such a great result well, last year. I got it. Unfortunately, there's not a fish on the line, but that would have been cool. Tied all kind of interesting knots up in there. Did you just about fall down? Stepped in a hole. Stepped in a hole? Yeah, right here. You good? Yeah. Ankles all right? All right. <laughs> it probably wasn't worth the hook, but it became principal yeah, after I, I came mean. all the way up here. I'm just getting it back. <laughs> and it's a nine, nine pound large mouth. It is a long way between bites, I'm telling you. <laughs> Definitely moved. Can't, can't ask Shane for more hooks tonight. Definitely following it. Definitely following it. Probably not. There's like nothing around here. 
I think it's just a really I have hooks, really just not the ones I prefer. I accidentally ordered the wrong size. I think it's just a really I like a one alt and order a two alt, and for bass. some reason, there is a massive difference between the one alt and the two alt. Two alt looks like you could flip with them. It is slower today than I expected, though. I expected to get, I expected to catch it like that last one I caught. I expected to catch, you know, seven or eight of those. Here he comes. He's like, no, nah, I'm gonna go back. He went, and he spun around, started chasing it. Hmm? No, I mean, he followed it to the edge of the pile, and then, then he said, no thank you, no gracias, no gracias. Boy, he has kept him honest with a lot of different glide mm -hmm. baits, a soft swim bait, a Nico rig here and there, but his main weapon so far today has been a mega bass jerk bait. I need you to start sinking down. My lure is below you. That thing that's tickling your tummy. Yeah, you need to go down. Go sink to the bottom. Sink to the bottom. There's a big one sitting there about 45 foot, but my bait's hung up now. I don't know that it's hung up, I just, it's not wanting, it's not popping over. Might be hung up now. Popped it off there. I must have popped a piece of the branch off or something. Came floating to the top. <laughs> Rookie Brian Smith, all his fish just came into bass track, including the six pounder. He's got 15 six, he's up in fourth place. I do believe basically everyone has a marshal today so other than like coming? three or oh, four guys. Okay. So we should have complete data. And if your favorite angler's not on there, then tell them to get with the program and catch some bass yeah, because they uh, on the board, probably please. do have a marshal with them. But do they got cell coverage everywhere, Ronnie? And some of far flung. I imagine so, for the most part. Well, his just all hit at once, Brian Smith. We were pretty much on a metro lake last week, just right outside of Columbia, mm -hmm. capital city. It's much more rural right down here in this part of the state. Yes, very <laughs> much so. Monk's Corner is the big metropolis here. If that's, you know, <laughs> exactly. And I-95, that one strike. <laughs> well, if yep. we were talking, Columbia would I be have. a good uh, classic venue. Yeah. Yeah. We got an arena right next to the convention center. may not be as big as... We need, there's only 150,000 square feet, I think. Gamecocks, I have. Arena, they've hosted a lot of different things there. Lived a few lifetimes in Monk's Corner throughout the years with mm. Davey. Looks awfully garish to me. Manning and Monk's Corner. What's oh, a yeah. good eatery there? Oh, there's a gas station down there that's killer. <laughs> <laughs> now that's nuts. Hey, there's more to it. There, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being very serious. Some it's of really the best good. eating around those food, rural yeah, places are stations. in the gas stations, yeah. Gas stations aren't what they used to be. They're, they're bigger now. They're more. 
Full service. In a different way. I was feeding you. No, just straight across. That's lovely. I guess the screws came out. Now Joseph Webster just knocked uh, Brandon Cab out of our top ten. Wow. We've seen no. some flashes of brilliance here. today. That is for sure. Come here. Come here. No doubt, and definitely seen some diversity today. Brandon Polinick focusing on brush piles, five to 15 feet of water, not catching numbers, which like we said, don't often see that here on Santee Cooper from there. Looking at your angler of the year leader, Brandon Cobb fishing exactly what we have seen. Isolated cypress trees on Lake Marion. And the one thing to really watch for the rest of today is guys that have gone all in on the sight fishing game. Steve Kennedy starting out on a shad spawn around the 95 bridge. Be really interesting to see if Cook and Benton could right the ship because this morning, both of those anglers very confident they could do 20 to 30 pounds and definitely has not transpired yet. But a little bit of reality coming from Murray and all the fish catches we've seen, but Good ones to be had here on Santee Cooper Lake. Solid morning. Oh, yeah, this is where the big ones live. That is for sure as we uh, get to the midway point of our day and we see Matt Robertson of Kentucky. Man on top of that leaderboard, 22 plus. Kyle Norsetter, the rookie. Carl Jockamson having another good tournament. Bryant Smith now has appeared in the top. Uh, had a good, good event last week. You know we've become spoiled when the leader unofficially has over 22 and we're kind of, ah, oh, we got to well, see some <laughs> nah. <laughs> Not so. Yeah. yeah, we need to straighten up. We need to straighten up a little bit here. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah. All right, the live mix will continue with the coverage here at Bassmaster.com. And after that, Dave and Davey, Dave Mercer, Davey Hyde, going to give us some on-location coverage for an hour. It will continue on our coverage all the way to 3 p.m. Eastern time, and that is when the weigh-in begins. Thanks for being with us this morning. The AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota, Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Progressive Insurance, and by Rapala.
a bunch of it. Well, I hadn't fished very many of these, but I had two bites in here pretty quickly. I was like, well, just fish them all. <laughs> but I have had no bites yet. Yeah, I think that grass fil filters it out. One of those areas, though, there's a few too many trees. <laughs> too many hiding spots. These are shallower, though, but I still have bites on them. I think the third one's the male. Unless there was two males in there. Could have been two males in there. This one's not very big. Don't try to catch him though. Oh gosh, here's another nice one right here. He just swam by this tree. Dang, I want to leave this male here and see if this female comes up here with it. There was that bigger one right there. Dude, I think I'd need to give this thing just a little bit. I think I can come back and catch this other female. I'll keep working for just a second and see if he bites. Dude, another female just swam up there. It's not locked on, it just swam up there, you know.
I really think I should leave this one alone. I can always come back to it if I need to. I think that's what I'm going to do. Give that female time to get with that male. Oh my gosh, I hate these eelgrass strands. The high spot here, and one of the bites I had was right beside it. I don't know if that was a thing. There's some brim beds on top of these high spots, but I hadn't really seen bass sit down them like you would expect. This one never came back. I don't know if this one came back or not. I hadn't seen him. Gosh, these things are tough today. Tough to see, tough to get the bite. Tough for him even being there.
No, nah, it's a, probably a three something, but I can't. I know I'm throwing in the right spot, but I, I seen his tail twice, but I think he just swam up there and then swam off. Yeah, there he is right here, way out here off the bed. So he's not even going around it. I'd catch him skipping a trick stick up there or something. I got two more big, or three more big ones that we gotta go to, so I don't wanna waste too much time on one like that. Let's idle over there. I mainly just want to see if this one's got a female. All right, let's go by himself. I ain't called a female, dude. <laughs> That's cool. Why can't you do this by all these trees and get a bite? I don't understand. Stomp I missed. I thought I saw one bedding up here somewhere. I couldn't couldn't get it to stick around.
Might go try that tree again and see if there was a threesome going on. So we were trying to figure out, are you a third kid? <laughs> yes or no? Yes. You're the third. <laughs> you're the third kid they had or you're pre or just the third? The third, okay. I got you. Okay. <laughs> we were wondering. <laughs> it looked like it. Yes, yes. We were like, huh. <laughs> Probably should have checked my line, huh? I retied, but I didn't check it way up. <laughs> it held. <laughs> yes. I know some of these beds have got fish on them, dude. They're just too much of it. Too much of it. off. I don't know if you notice, but I'm laying the line on top of the water and watching for it. If it ever tightens up and starts running.
terrible cast. I can't put it where I want it. There you go. Come on. I swear there's beds everywhere, you know? <laughs> it's just the kind of how the place looks. I couldn't tell if, that, if I had a bite. I felt a little better.
I still can't tell if there's freaking one there. gonna go to that dock. I know it feels good. It's exactly what we need. Hey, he's already rolling. Ooh, I can see one of those bits from here, I think. Well, I can see a bit up there. When I'm chasing the worm. I wait it, bait it. I pull from the footwork and then I see a bed up there. This is about all that I've seen like left on the bank. Fish this size. Oh my gosh. Where are you? It was chasing a brim or something. Oh my gosh, that was a terrible cast. Maybe you'll still eat it. That'll get interesting. Sound like it was chasing a brim. But I don't see, I didn't see it. I don't know where he went. I don't know where he, where he went to after he did whatever he did. I 
Sound like a pretty good one. But, yeah, it sounded good. But I don't know where he went. Kind of expected to see him swim across that sand right there. Never saw him. Hmm. Missed opportunity. It's a bad cast, but I was kind of thinking he'd even come this way. I think this one's back up there. This one might be super finicky. I think I can catch this one. I'm gonna need a shaky head though. He's looking at it, but it, when I jiggle it, it's moving too far. Catch him, put him in the live well, hopefully. I hate fishing with four. It's like, makes you fish weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just eat it, staring at it. Let's see. I was hoping whatever that was that ran brim on the bank would come, cruise back down through here. That did not sound like a little one. That'd be what I was doing. Fish to be no size, y'all are hard to catch. These are the type that normally during bedtime, you just like bomb a wacky worm up there and they eat it. Two pounders. I like catch this one because that one's a little bit bigger and this one looks catchable and just see how big he is. Looking at it. And grab him so he don't come off and show he's hooked in the mouth. It hooked in the mouth. You can see it right there in the mouth. All right. So that one's a little bit bigger than we think he is because that's like a two and a half in the mouth. Yeah, that one's way bigger, yeah, way bigger than I thought. <laughs> like, like substantially bigger than I thought. <laughs> Now that really actually makes me want to catch that other one because yeah. I think he's bigger than this one. I mean, not that that's a big one, but that's like, it's a lot bigger than my number five because I had because he was imaginary. One, two, three, four, five. Got a limit. There you go. That's way I yeah, that like that. Way, <laughs> I that one was like, like a pound and a quarter <laughs> pound, that's what I thought. Now it makes me want to catch that other one. Yeah. Because then they get rid of the 14 incher, because he's bigger than that one. He might be a three pounder. This one right here, you thought? That one was two and a half, I think. Oh, so you're saying that one might That be one might be a three pounder, yeah. I'm stupid, and I didn't waypoint him, but I think I'll see him. <laughs> This one over here sounds bigger. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad fish. I think that was just cruiser. Cruiser? Yeah, ran brim up. I've been looking for that all week, because that's what I do at home this time of year. Mm -hmm. Look for wolf packers that run brim. I don't think they do it out here. I mean, dude, I've looked like, I've trolled down just those flatter banks for miles. Ain't seen none. I'll go up there and look, but I'm pretty sure. All right. Yeah, that fish was about a pound bigger than I anticipated. 
Mm-hmm. And that one I can't even see good. Yeah. That one we could see like real good. I got a good look at this thing when I when came by. I would have called him a one and three quarters. Is that about what you thought? That's what I, I thought he was like a one and a half. Yeah. He looked like the same size as the one in the box. And like that wasn't a little one that I just called. I mean, it's not a big one, but it's not a little one either. <laughs> So now I really want to catch that one. <laughs> Might need to look at those trees down there. I caught two eight pounders off those trees last time. Yeah, around the corner on the bed last time. Caught an eight two, day, two days in a row. And the eight, one of the eights had a five pound buck. Yeah. One day I had 20 just literally off that little corner. Oh, well, that was good. I'm actually really glad that I stopped on that one. Cause that's like not a super easy one to cull. I'm not going to be able to see this direction. Dang it. Now you got five. I got five. Catch this, one. Catch this one, then we don't, I mean, there's no point in really bed fishing for any because cause they all seem to be like that size, you know? Mm -hmm. Making sure I didn't overlook any down through here. I can't see this way, though, this going this way. Mm-hmm. Lack or lack of sun. <laughs> the, the, the brightness is in our face. Man, that surprised me how big that fish was. That's why I said I stop and fish for him, because, like, I, I don't know. Can't judge him. Uh-uh. I'm just giving her three, three for the road. I mean, it was a nice one. It'd be worth it if, if she was up there. I can barely see where to flip. And she was there yesterday. I mean, late yesterday, I, right before I started rigging, I, I put in there by the house, run over here and checked. See if this one's still here up here. This is the pocket I caught the six and a half pounder on buzz bait. So. Now I caught it off a cypress tree.
sometimes it skips, sometimes it don't. I mean, seriously, catch two tens in one day? You're uh, I'm sorry. I got my motor up. See that up? The AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Welcome back. Uh, a brief break. We gave you three days to get, you know, the lawn mode and all that sort of stuff. Shovel some snow if you're up north. Well, the Bassmaster Elite Series is back in your life with the fourth stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series. And again in sunny South Carolina, this time Caledon County. And look atop the leaderboard. Our day one leader in last week's tournament is once again leading on day number one. Matt Robertson with 24 pounds and four ounces. And there was a lot of hoo hawing and saying that this one might be tougher than many had expected because last year, of course, an incredible tournament. Twice we broke the Bassmaster Century Club, which is weighing in a winning weight over 100 pounds. We two anglers do that. And of course, our eventual champion, Drew Cook, weighed over 100 pounds. And let's jump up and catch up with what's been going on here today with your Toyota Midday Report. And who better to start with Davey Height than Drew Cook, our defending champ? Absolutely. You know, we had to have a camera with Drew this morning. He's our defending champion, like you mentioned. And there are some fish still spawning here on the Santee Cooper Lakes. He's been in Potato Creek a lot this morning. That's where he caught most of his fish that he weighed in last year. A lot more company there this year. He kind of put the place on the map with the Bassmaster Elite Series. Drew Cook having a much more difficult time this morning than he did last year this time, but it's not exactly last year this time. It's about 13 months ago. It's another month later, which a lot of the spawning process is already expired here on the Santee Cooper Lakes. I'll be very, very surprised if Drew Cook and Drew Benton, they're the best, certainly two of the best sight fishermen on the planet. Be surprised if they're able to make that happen all four days. One Drew lets meet the other last week's champion, two-time Elite Series champion, Drew Benton. Yeah, last year, Drew Benton had a good tournament here. Also, a top 10 for him. Last week, a lot better than that. He came from 10th to win, but only five pounds back. The field was so, so tight there last week. And speaking of the catches this week, Dave, I think they'll be the heavyweights, the guys that lead and will win this tournament. First and second, third place will be right around 100 pounds, maybe a little over. But it'll fall off, but it's not falling off for this guy. He has not fallen off all year long. He is officially your progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader. Brandon Cobb, you expected to see him do well last week. Lake Murray's got a lot of experience there. Hasn't been there as much recently in the last couple of years, but grew up there fishing with his dad. He's also fished here at Santee Cooper a lot. Had a real good tournament here last year. Also, you expected to see him do good at Lake Murray and Santee Cooper, but he also did good at Lake Okeechobee, Lake Seminole. That's why he is our Bassmaster. Leader for Bassmaster Angler Year. Brandon Cobb, a lot of experience here. You see him, one of the few people fishing these ice Isolated cypress trees, not as many fish on these trees this time out. A lot more vegetation in the water. Really, really happy to see that. But it spread these fish out quite a bit. 
Cobb right fishing there. for more than just mm -hmm. this tournament. If you remember, he weighed in our Phoenix Boats yeah, Big Bass of the tournament, an 8-12 on Lake Okeechobee. Well, there's Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the year. If he can hold on outside of this tournament, going to be tough to see that getting beat, and it pays $10,000. But this guy averages a second place here in the last two times, a win and a third-place finish. Really incredible. And you say, well, Brandon Pollock just got it figured out in the spring of the year here. But when he won here, his first place finish was in the fall of the year. Much more difficult, obviously, very different things going on in the fall of the year. Brandon Pollock has kind of been doing things differently in both of those tournaments. That he finished third and first and fishing off the bank, and he's doing that today. A really, really cool plan, fishing isolated brush piles. Not far from the takeoff. You know, this is where most of the big tournaments are held at. A lot of fish released here. But very few tournaments actually get one in this creek. We'll see if Brandon Pollock can do it. And Bassmaster fans all around the world say thank you because we have a camera with Steve Kennedy, and it's always fun. Always fun. Steve Kennedy is someone who's known to search out the shad spawn, uh, whether it's the Classic in Texas or we're in Alabama or Santee Cooper Lakes. When he knows that there's a possibility that shad spawn will be going on, he's going to look for it. And he's in a good area there this morning, got a couple real good fish off the you know, just from the start. And then he said, hey, I might not even go to Lake Moultrie. That was his plan initially. I don't know. We'll have to check in here in the next few minutes when we get to our live cameras if he's gone to Lake Moultrie. But Steve Kennedy expected to have a good tournament here and certainly had a great start this morning. And that right there was your Toyota midday report. And I'm joined by Bassmaster Classic champion, angler of the year, Bass Fishing Hall, baby, Bass Fishing Hall of Famer, and um, right here in your home state, again, we're singing Sweet Caroline. And a lot of guys were singing the blues going into this event, Davey Hyde. They Was were that all sandbagging? They were, but you nailed it. We, we look at social media enough to see. I can't tell you how many five-plus pound fish I saw people holding up. Hey, I only caught one of these, but uh, we don't always fall for that. We're going to have a heavyweight event. But I do, I've mentioned this several times, I think it'll fall off a little more than it did last year. Not quite as many fish up there just for easy pickings. Will forward-facing sonar be a big player in this event? I got to feel it's just there's too many guys looking for it for it not to play everywhere now. Yeah, with Brandon Polnick already this morning, you see him using it. Patrick Walters, not fishing exactly like Polnick, but using it. It will be used. I don't know if we'll see it actually be the determining factor, but I think this day and time, it'll always be a tool that we'll see the anglers using. Well, whatever tools you're using, however you're getting it done, it's all happening out on this, our playing field. And a playing field you're very familiar with, Davey Height. Yeah, looking at everyone spread out a little bit more. For us only having six cameras out today, two of the anglers, Patrick Walters and Steve Kennedy, have gone to Lake Moultrie. Drew Benton on the upper end of Lake Marion, Brandon Polinick, like we said, in the creek right here at Takeoff, Talkaw Creek. Drew Cook down in Potato Creek, where he won the event last year. So they are really spread out good. Brandon Polnick on the south side. Um, excuse me, Brandon Cobb on the south side of the lake. So very well spread out, the six anglers we have cameras with. Now out with Brandon Polnick, the prodigy, live, hooked up. Giant crappie. Goosh. Warm up the grease, Dave. This is why I'm throwing this color, though. <laughs> a lot of big. Look how well it matches. Crappy, we say in South Carolina. Brandon said crappie. They're Sokolay. They're Specs. They're a lot That's of different MB things. That's Gizzard. Depending on where you are in the country. This matches those crappies so well. Yeah, and the swim bait looks just like it, too. Look, right? If it wasn't hooked up. I mean, it's just a smaller version of it. Same color. Same color. Oh, well, we had a great morning. It didn't go exactly as planned because I had to run a bunch of places and not get any bites. Uh, and then we kind of hit a little stretch where, where we started getting some good bites and caught some good ones. We've had some really close opportunities where they've either gotten up on the jerk bait or they've gotten on the glide and just not fully committed i mean it's just a game of inches right now still too short of my limit but i kind of committed to this game plan knowing that it was going to be risky
you know, I just, it was so hard to get bites that I thought that I would start off a little hotter and we, we did and I was hoping that when I left here I would have, have a good bag and, and then could go do some looking around in some other areas, but they just have not fully cooperated. No sailing out of here before we even have a, a limit. I mean, the ones we got are, we got two that are pushing five and then another one that's pushing four. I mean, we have, we have good size, which is what I expected. It was just whether or not I could get five bites. I thought I might come in with one five pounder or I might come in with 25 or 30. It was just whether or not I could get the bites. Obviously four box right now, Drew Cook, Brandon Polnick, Steve Kennedy, and Patrick Walters. And Cook hooked up. Ooh. Oh man, what the Ooh. heck? Just looking at his rod. Mm. <laughs> he didn't move that fish very much. Yeah, I like pulled my back. Looked like a big whenever one. I did that. Mm. Right. Yeah. Little insider scoop. He just didn't get enough juice in him. He started on a chain oh, yeah. today. Never got it. Well, got the mail, but like a legit changed this entire tournament giant. Really? So how big did he say? Did you talk to him? That's the insider or is somebody? Talk to somebody who was around him. Okay. I see the mail up there now. Like legit double digit? Wow. Yeah. So although the spawn is not what it was before. There's de mm. it's definitely still playing here. Sure, sure. There'll be fish spawning here the first week of May. I mean, there's there's always still fish here, really until mid-May, that are spawning. It just usually I find it usually just gets harder to ride that pattern. You know, yeah, the further on it gets on, you might have a day there. where you hammer them. I was amazed how well you know. Drew Cook did last week, but obviously Drew Benton winning, but he had to he had to switch it up and, yeah. and catch some fish uh, on a couple other baits, not sight fishing, to be able to put that 26 pound stringer together. But but honestly, it, it amazed me the way they kept on finding good quality fish. And some of my friends were camera boat drivers, so they watched them fish. That you know, and some of those friends, you know, those guys are all fish Lake Murray a lot and and they were even saying it's absolutely incredible uh the fish that Drew Benton and Drew Cook were able to see 10 Gosh, feet deep and it. you know continue to catch them all four days off the bed at least a few each day impressive vision but also an impressive stance by Drew Cook and he was standing Upright with both feet flat on the front Boy, deck when he pulled deep. his back. I'll see what he does when he sets a hook here. <laughs> but that hadn't been the case this week. I have not found that Definitely. yet. I mean, this might be that fish. Because when he really hooked up with it, I mean, that looked that, like it really did. Fish. It really did. On everything, really. Really surprised to see Patrick Walters. Struggling as much as he is so far. Keep in mind, we meant showed Matt Robertson leading. Uh, when I'm saying Patrick Walker, Walter struggling at noon last week, Matt Robertson was our leader on day one. Had basically nothing at this time, so lots of time for things to happen for anyone. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh boy. It's a good one. For sure. Come here. <laughs> we strike again. Wow. Oh, it's good to be back, Jake. Oh, now my dad can quit stressing. That one's for, for my dad right there. That one's for you, Pops. I hope you're feeling better today. I mean, a, a fine Santee Cooper specimen.
Boy, I laid the wood to her that time. You think? <laughs> I'd have bet money you hurt your back again, <laughs> Drew. But there was some weight on the other end. Of it. Yeah. He may have hurt his back, but he's probably you know, not going to feel it for a few minutes quarter. after catching that one. Exactly. Nice. Good old six and a quarter. Solid, brother, solid. Drew mentioned his dad last week, oh, no. right before weighing, he got word on Sunday right that his dad had had some medical complications. He spent the week in the hospital, but the good news is uh, things are pointed the right way. He's got some recovery ahead of him, but uh, I love South Carolina, period. everybody at Bass sends our thoughts and prayers out to him. Absolutely. I had not heard that. I did see him early in the week last week at Lake Murray. Usually comes. Yeah. A, I don't know if he's ever has he missed an event. That drew I don't think so ever. I don't think so ever. I mean, he's. That's incredible that to have. I didn't have a parent that you know committed to being there with you, helping you along the way. Drew Cook's a grown man. Not that he necessarily needs the help, but it's it's great to have that support, family yeah. support. Oh, and it means means the world to Drew, you know, yeah. th and that's – I talked to him about it for a bit this morning, but the good news is that things are, things are headed in the right direction. Good, good, good. Funny, you know, insider story about Drew, last year's champion, you know, all the anglers will tell you that they are – you know, not superstitious. And while I tell this story, let's have a look back at last year and the big fish beatdown that he put on over 100 pounds in a winning weight. Well, the first thing he said to me last year, right here on this dock, as I walked up this walkway, oh the God. first thing he said to me is, I'm going to act like I'm 12 pounds behind. Yes. It's an inside joke. We, me and him always have because he's, he's a come from behind guy. Day one's never really great for him. I see him first thing this morning. What do you think the first thing he said to me? Anglers say they're not superstitious. The first I'm thing he said. I'm going to act like I'm 12 pounds behind. That's great. That's great. So speaking of that, and then some more footage of Drew Cook last year. Absolutely incredible for him to side fish all four days and weigh in over 100 pounds. But Drew Benton's win last, last week may have been partly because he had to act like he was five pounds behind. Yeah. He, not stopping on three pounders. That he saw You're on the right. bed, knowing I gotta, I gotta go find a five or a six. It's amazing the way things like that work out. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. If he, if if he doesn't have that if, day, if he three, goes out in second, he stops on three a, pounders. You're right. Could have been the whole reason, a big, not the whole reason. He had to go catch fish, but could have been a big reason that he actually won the tournament. And that what you're saying with Drew Cook, that's the mentality. I'm not stopping on three pounders. No. Well, a unique opportunity in front of the Drews. They said, hey, we want to go back to back on this. Whether whether it be True Benton going back to back or both Drews going back to back. But right now, the problem is the same problem they had this time last week. Matt Robertson, your tournament leader. And look at second place, Kyle Norsetter, an Elite Series rookie. But in third place, how cool is that? Carl Jacobson once again catching them. What a season, and not a Bass fan in the world. Isn't excited to see Daryl Gleason up in the top five as well. Lots of fishing still to come. We'll be right back from on-location coverage, Santee Cooper Lakes, South Carolina. Yeah! Another! No way! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minkota. After a brief three-day break, the Bassmaster Elite Series is back in your life with the Avco Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes in beautiful Clarendon County, South Carolina. And every single time we come to Santee Cooper Lakes, they put on a show. And today is no different. No, you don't have to adjust your TV screen. We do have the exact same leader as we had this time in last week's tournament, Matt Robertson up top the leader of over 24 pounds and four ounces. Who's he going to be worried about in that leaderboard, Davey Height? Ah, just some recent Drew Cook because he was the winner here last 
year and then just put a six pounder, but he's not quite where he needs to be this year. Drew Cook does it. But look at VMC Redline on point. Caught his first fish at 732. Good way to start it off with a five and a half pounder. 814, four pounder. Both of those fish probably relating to the shad spawn. Then it took about two hours before he got it going again, but just the right size, a five pounder, 1032, a 412, and 1121, another five pounder. That's the size fish that you have to catch when you're here at the Santee Cooper Lakes. 24 pounds, four ounces, and a lot of time remaining. Big, big deal here is to get a limit. If you can catch eight or 10 fish here, usually you're gonna have a couple of those four to five pounders. Matt Robertson has all four and five pounders already this morning. Looks like he is on them. Yeah, he, he's definitely on him. Oh, that's a good. He's down to Lake Moultrie, which does not surprise me at all, the way he likes to fish and what's going on down there. Now let's go over to our defending champion, Drew Cook. And I think Ooh. they got to test his. Is this hooked up again moments ago? Moments ago. Oh, no, this is the one we just saw a few minutes ago, and, and a great fish. At some point, somebody's got to check the Drew's eyes for steroid use. <laughs> yes. I mean, like, they're seeing fish that other people don't even see. So you oh, obviously have an advantage there. if you're taller to have that the oh, angle to look for yeah, those fish. But that's not the case with Drew Cook for, or Drew Benton. For my dad right there. That one's for you, Pops. I hope you're feeling better today. I mean, a, a fine Santee Cooper specimen. Boy, I laid the wood to her. Drew that Cook, time. catch him on the water, but also going to help us break down the baits with your Bass Pro Shops top baits. Drew Cook here on the shores of Santee Cooper for the fourth stop of the Elite Series. And uh, some of the key baits that I think are going to play this week, um, obviously, is going to be a stick bait. This is the big bite. Um, prototype sensation uh, trick stick that should be coming out soon. Also with the fish, you know, up shallow on bed, I'm going to be pitching a quarantine crawl and the same thing as last year, a fighting frog, tilapia and tilapia magic. Um, I think those are going to be my key baits this week. That's your Bass Pro Shops top lures. Now back out live with Drew Cook. He yeah, has no, not no, moved, but long. just a few feet from where he was. But he's pitching in a different little spot. At a, it's like a different bed, only feet five, six feet away from where he caught the six and a quarter just a few minutes ago. He needs one more to fill his limit. Four fish in the live well. He is truly a master at what he is doing. And that's one of the most beautiful things in bass fishing to watch, an angler that is doing what they are best at. Just change baits. Good change. Gosh dang. No limit. Just caught his fifth keeper. Three-pounder. It's really, what, what you just said is it's so true, Dave, watching someone do what they love to do, and it's oh, so, so good at it. Some. Spending so much time myself here on Santee Cooper and being out here just two weeks ago, for him to be catching sight fish as easily as it looks like he is in the exact same place he caught him last year, so the whole no world knows where to go uh, in that area and look for those fish on the bed is really amazing. It really is. People just watching that don't know a lot about the Santee Cooper Lakes, uh, I'm sure are impressed with, because they just know that Drew Cook is good. But it's, it is even more impressive to me right now seeing what he's doing than what he did the first day last year when he had a much heavier weight than what he has right now. Yeah. Just because the time of the year and the phase that these fish are in, more towards post-spawn. And never mind the 
emotional stuff he's gone through this week that we just talked about. Yeah. You know, not not just it just shows you how not just technique wise, but just how mentally strong of a person that he is. Well, all these angers, we don't talk yeah. about this enough. You, you, life goes on. Ooh. Brandon that Paul one rushed off the bottom and crushed real it. Real close to the boat. <sighs> Golly. I mean, there was one, that one bit it. I missed it. My bait went flying. He came chasing it. Oh, and then that other one. That other one flew off the bottom and just crushed it. That was insane. Well, obviously there's still a few bass hanging out in that pile like I thought. There's one right there on the back side of it. Look at him swimming away from it. Oh gosh. As Brandon Polnick tries to recover, you see our TH Marine weather watch. And, uh, Look at all. Supposed to get warmer throughout the event. My God. Until Sunday. Big changes on Sunday. Hot Saturday of 84, mm. then Championship Sunday, mm. high mm -hmm. 73. Well, that was insane. 53, showers and thunderstorms. TH He's Marine like, nope, I'm going to eat your Championship treat. Championship Sunday. So the big swim baits and the glide baits when I was so fishing wild. the Elite Series could be addictive just watching the baits and watching fish follow your bait, but not for whatever reason. bite. Now that we have forward-facing sonar, <laughs> you have another tool to watch those fish follow your bait and nip at your bait. Uh, so, so addictive. Recent Opens champion and fishing phenom that has... Excited the bass fishing world. Ben Milliken, who recently won an open and is just about to start pre fish for his next open. I think pre fish starts tomorrow. But he, I was talking to him and he's a you know famous big bait guy. And he caught a bunch of his winning fish on a Carolina rig. And, you know, really? when you think, and the point that he made, the reason that he caught him on the Carolina rig, I thought was just shows how advanced of an, like how he thinks things through. He said the big bait just has such a bad trait of pulling fish off of structure. They're going to follow it. So man. that's why he started with Kellen Rig, not just because he I thought better hookup or whatever, but he just didn't the want it. Pull them. The yep. the we heard uh, Brandon this morning. I was out on the water, Ashley and I, and talking about fish following his bait off of the brush piles that he was fishing real close to takeoff. So that's definitely... Something that was happening to Brandon this morning. I, I just thought it was neat because you so often, and maybe not here in the Elite Series, but anglers in general want to do the exact opposite. They start with the big bait, and then it's not that's not happening. So I'll I'll make my work my way down to the Carolina rig. And what you're saying that he was thinking is. If you start with that big bait and pull them off, then they're not even there to bite the other options that you throw in there. How many fish are on this bed, Davey Height? <laughs> <laughs> he has, uh, at this bed, you can see clearly, but yeah. he, bed, it's, I think I'll he's fished three different beds, of. or maybe that six and a quarter would have been the female much. off of this bed. But it was a, a good male, so like, you know, over a three and a half pounder. And when we were way back there, I think the fish that I hooked and lost the first cast up here was actually the male. Um, and then, you know, shortly after I caught the female, but this is a, a good male. I'm probably gonna, gonna catch it. If I can't, it's a little squirrely now, which I would be too. I probably wouldn't bite it again. If, if that's what just bit me. Right, he's coming back in there every once in a while. So if he'll, if he'll act right, we'll catch him. That's kind of cold. And uh, 
look for, for one more of those big ones, you know? That's really all we need. One or two more. Oh! Startled me, Davey. Startled Hines. you. Me too. Skeeter, a big fish alert. Cracked 100 pounds last year here. Well, he's catching oh big God, ones again. One Caleb right Kufal here. with a seven pound, four ounce Skeeter Boats big so fish this alert. One, right past this one. But I'd, I'd like to save it, but I don't, I don't see it making it through the day, really. Just because of where it's at. About as obvious of a bed as you can, as you can get. In the last year, I think, will have been left alone today. I think we'll be able to catch this one. It might take us some time, but we'll we'll spend the time on it because it's a nice lot one. of a lot of calculating going on there for Drew Cook. Uh, would like to leave this fish until tomorrow, but said and and even I can see the bed from yeah. here. Uh, those are the kind you want to try to pick off day one because somebody else probably will. But Drew Cook might be underestimating just how good he can see compared to some other anglers. That, that fish has been there until. At least noon on day one, it might have a chance to stay there a few more hours. What percentage you feel do you think is sight fishing? Maybe a quarter of the field. Wow. And I, I would not have thought that many had we not seen how many anglers were in Potato Creek this morning. Um, I even heard when an angler say, even Brad Wiley said he's looking for him on a bed. He can't get a bite any other way. <laughs> Well, lots of fishing still to come here on this incredible historic fishery. Last year, 200-pound bags, and uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens here. But it doesn't matter what's happening right now. Everything is unofficial until it's official, and it doesn't get official Tell our way in Loading the Yeti hot seat right now, of course, will be Matt Robertson for the second week in a row, weighing at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Davey, I throw me a name out. Just somebody. That we uh, haven't maybe even seen. That we got to watch. Ah, uh, Brian Schmidt. Oh, nice pick. I'm going to say Lee Livesey. Lee Livesey. Yeah. Another? No way. Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Mincota. Welcome back to what's normally sunny South Carolina here in beautiful Clarendon County, South Carolina for day one of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes. And that was our greeting this morning. A lot of fog. Anglers were a little concerned that maybe our day would have to start a little late. But thankfully, the right call was made, as always, at Bassmaster Elite Series event. Safety is first, but the fog started to clear and um, there was no fog for Matt Robertson this morning. 24 pounds and 4 ounces. Elite Series rookie Kyle Norsetter in second with 23.6. And Carl Jacobson continues this incredible season that he's had as he continues to assault the progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leaderboard. And Davey Height, those that thought that we wouldn't see the big bites, they were definitely wrong so far in this tournament. But a lot of fishing left to go. But That'll give you an idea of how many big bites we've seen here this week. Yeah, and we start out down on the lower end, the lower lake, Lake Moultrie, and you see, I don't know last year if we had a total of uh, 10 fish caught in Lake Moultrie in the event, and already this morning it looked like about eight fish over four pounds slide on up on the southern end and of uh, Lake Marion and quite a few fish being caught there. Keep in mind, this is a very big area from Rocks Pond down to the diversion canal is uh, probably about 10 or 12 mile area there. Lots of fish being spread out. You look over in Potato Creek and there in Talkaw Creek, go a little further up uh, around the 95 bridge. There were some fish caught this morning. Good, good way to see these 100, 103 Bassmaster Elite anglers being spread out between Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. Probably about a 60 mile stretch there you see in four pound plus fish being caught all throughout it that's a great sign of a great 
two great fisheries, actually, Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. And that was your marathon peak performance. Now back out on the water live, four box Cook, Polinick, Kennedy, and Cobb. Drew Cook obviously fishing for one on the bed. He's caught two there in the last 45 minutes live. or so and working on another one that he lost earlier. He said it's about a three and a half pounder. Brandon Polinick fishing totally eyeball. different, using glide baits and swim baits. A little right bit now. of jerk baits, uh, fishing brush piles, using forward-facing sonar. Hmm. 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 Steve Kennedy and Brandon Cobb seem to be fishing cypress trees. They're definitely trees, hottest isolated on that first cast trees. with the mag drive. And it seems to be working out the exact same for both Kennedy and Cobb, except they're tied for 12th place unofficially, but Kennedy won short of his limit so far. Cobb has five fish, 16 pounds even for both of them. Davey, what, what was your guess coming into this event? For winning weight, uh, I think the winning weight will be ninety plus pounds, somewhere between ninety and a hundred pounds. I just been, and I I hope I'm wrong, but I've just been adamant that I think it it will drop off. Uh, it, last week it took thirty four pounds to make the first cut, and I don't think it'll take that here this week, uh, just because the numbers. Uh, and with the vegetation spreading out, it's just scattered these fish. They're more in a postponed mode. Uh, not only in a different fishery, but we're a little further south. It's a week later. Um, so some more of these fish moving off the bank. And I'm I'm really not surprised to see Brandon Coll uh, Polinick fishing brush piles. Brush piles. That's good. something that really plays here this time of the year. Uh, we'll see how many other people are doing that. But I thought that would be, and I didn't talk about that to any of these anglers fishing because it's just not really fair if I have that kind of conversation. They're not supposed to be getting information, but I, I never even mentioned anything about brush piles, period, to not at Lake Murray or here or Lake Greenwood, anywhere in the area, because that's something that not a lot of people do, but it's a big player here this time of the year. But with so much new vegetation, so much more eelgrass, a lot of those fish are not even out on the brush piles. I just, I, I really look bait. forward to seeing the we'll next few years how it unfolds. This fishery is going to get a lot better if we if we have that much vegetation but staying in here. Not really. For the next couple of a years. A rock drop right up here, but you can see my jerk bait there. Probably a gar. The other right thing there. is, Davey, I think we're just going to make a point. It's not easy to catch 100 pounds. No, I mean, it's there not. was eight of them last year, yeah. but it feels like everybody's like, well, yeah. of course, it's got to be 100 pounds. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, it's a, yeah. it, it is a hard, hard thing to do. Yeah. And and most people who have never fished multi-day tournaments, even if you fished a two-day tournament, which a lot of serious bass anglers have done from the high school level on up. But a four-day event is just, and you know, yeah, it took 29 pounds to win here, right here at this launch that we're at right now this past saturday Gosh, it's gonna be a shame. but that's one day yeah to but do that four days in a row the weather hit. changes the i mean the wind you know is a big big deal here on these two lakes because they're so big a lot of bait around here That mega live view is really, really awesome. Um, a great thing that started happening at the Classic, and I love that we get to do it. But those who saw it earlier, if you missed it, it is our PowerPole replay of the day, and it is, once again, the prodigy, Brandon Polinick. Oh, yeah. Brandon Polinick uh, saw this fish on forward-facing sonar. You can see the brush pile. And I think they had the actually had the camera on on his uh, hook to his mega live and saw the, the whole deal go down brandon described it as just being one of the most incredible fish catches he's ever had and he's had a lot of them because this fish uh 
the jerk bait hit the brush pile and kind of got snagged a little bit and then broke free and this fish just went nuts and and just came from far away and attacked his jerk bait it's really really cool to be able to see it all unfold looking with your mega forward facing sonar and cool for us to be able to see it oh yes yeah it really is you can learn so much quicker and so many people the way so all of our electronics have advanced so much in fishing F each year it seems to you know just go to another level and people ask how do i learn and the easiest way to learn is to be able to actually see it happen not have brandon polnick tell you even if it is brandon polnick telling you but for him to be able to tell you what happened and you see it happen you can you can pick up on it just immediately what they are cannot tell what they are see uh you don't well, see something the sitting right there though clearly right now because of the direction he's got his trolling motor facing well something that doesn't like my jerk bait A lot of big crappy around these brush piles. They have, uh, I just got to say crappy. I'm from South Carolina. That's what they call them here in the Santee Cooper Lakes. Not but crappie. Not crappie. It's crappy. Spelled the same bad. way. Spelled the same way. Oh, Would you rather have a crappy lunch or a crappy lunch? <laughs> Well, we're not talking about lunch. You, you, you would say for lunch if you're talking about eating the crappie or the crappie. <laughs> I don't know how you could have a crappie lunch. I, 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 I can have you, you ever had one? Exactly. Is it better or worse than a crappy lunch? I mean, they're all the same. They're deep fried. I mean, put spam in that stuff and it's about tastes good. They but they have the tournaments guy. here. There was one this spring. Seven fish limit, 18 pounds. Seven fish limit, 18 for to, to 20 pounds. Yes. No, for and crappy. Crappy. <laughs> crappy or bigger than crappy. Do you believe that, that we may have just unofficially set a brand new Bassmaster record for the entire season between what Tyler Ravette has done earlier this year involving crappy or crappy? And now that, I mean, we've talked more about crappy crappy yeah. this season than we've ever. Seems like. Maybe Five we're just years hungry. ago, but yeah, that's how Tyler Rivette got on his pattern to win the event. He was crappy fishing just before he went in on the second day of practice. Well, this guy hasn't had a crappy season. He is current leader in Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points, Brandon Cobb. Let's see, he's on an outside tree. It's definitely what people want to target this time of the year. Can't tell. Yeah, I'm sure he's bigger than that one. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. That's a real good one. Fish, chill. Yeah. Man, he's good. He ain't that good. Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> That'll help. Like a four and a half. I think I may have shook him Smallest off Smallest fish, one and a half pounds. <laughs> big, big help. That's why you troll all the way to the random trees. I think I mentioned last week how similar good but different call right there. Uh, John Cox and Brandon Cobb are. Yeah, Di very different people, very yeah, different laughs and this okay. and that. But two people that seem to be going yep. fishing and having fun every day. A lot of pressure on him, leading Bassmaster Angler of the Year. A lot on line. Biggest fish uh, of the year so far, Brandon Cobb. A lot going on, and you can't tell it by just watching him right now. He's just out there having fun catching fish. Yep. 
Always yep. having a fun on the water, but it's a little bit more fun when you're catching them like Brandon Cobb is in 2023. Your progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader, the C O W B, Brandon Cobb. But as far as the tournament goes, Matt Robertson continues to climb that leaderboard and had wait to his day. Can anyone catch him, Davey Height? Ah. Uh. I don't know if 25 will lead today. It, it may. I figured it would take somewhere about that. But uh, Kyle Norsetter has been up in his little weight, up in his weight little by little also this afternoon. So Carl Jacobson having a great event also. Lots of fishing still to come. But uh, speaking of a crappy or crappy lunch, we're done after this. We'll be back in the studio with ZT, Tommy and Such. Or no, ZT. I'm bad. What's that other guy? Job. Ronnie? Ronnie, yeah. Yeah. A quarter. No way. Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Our Bassmaster live coverage continues into the final two hours of fishing from day number one. The AFCO Bassmaster Elite at the Santee Cooper Lakes, Clarendon County. Here in South Carolina, the on sea land. Fishing facility is our headquarters for both takeoff and weigh in, which is coming up later today, right after the uh, finishing. Uh, the first flight wraps up at 3 o'clock. Matt Robertson, as he did last week at Lake Murray with 25 pounds and 8 ounces on the first day at Lake Murray. That's where he stands right now, but he's got two more hours left to fish. Rookie Kyle Norsetter from Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, having a really slow start to his season, but man, he is putting up. Putting all those fears to rest here. He's having a great day on the Santee Cooper Lakes as we take a look at these two big, big impoundments here. One of them, 110,000 acres. That's Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie right below there. We've been waiting in years. 50. We've been waiting in years past for Lake Moultrie to factor, Tommy. And this is the year that some anglers whispered maybe it could happen. The water's a little bit higher. Normally, with low water down in Moultrie, it's hard to get to. The fish are a little more scattered and dispersed, but. We'd expect to see Drew Cook not far from where he won the Elite Series oh, yes. event last year, Potato Why, Creek he? region of Lake Marion and Santee Cooper Lakes. He's got three, I believe, in the live well. Or is this the third? We'll find. Yes. He's been keyed up on the spot. There's been a bed with a couple different fish nearby it. I told you. For about Just 45 do minutes it. at least. Like Nike. What's your small one, Wes? 180. There's one right here in front of me on bed. I'll leave it for you. Bigger than 180, I think. Oh, he's got a limit. I'm no. sorry, we're catching up with Drew Cook after an agonizingly slow mo morning. Number one. All right, now we got to get rid of the three pounder. Now he has to get rid of a three pound. That's a good problem to have mm -hmm. early on day yeah, one. Three ten. Ten. What a turnaround for our defending champion here at the Santee Cooper Lakes. Drew Cook now into the top five with a great, great last hour and a half of fishing. Mark Zona, well, can we start it? Can we start the Yamaha Midday Report? All right, let's snap off the Yamaha Midday Report. I think Drew Benton and Drew Cook, even though we just saw Drew Cook calling here minutes ago, a little bit slow for your sight fishermen here today on Santee Cooper Lakes, Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. Drew Benton sitting right now with about, call it 12 and a half pounds, but almost seems like that fog and cloud cover earlier today, not having these fish completely set up on their spawning beds, but slow rises on the leaderboard with some of your sight fishermen from there somebody doing something totally opposite your 2020 champion here on santee cooper brandon polinick fishing five to 15 feet of water definitely again you don't come to santee cooper to say hey i'm gonna catch 50 to 100 bass you come here for quality and Politic not getting a lot of bites on those brush piles but the one he's is getting the bite definitely the quality there for Polinick. Onik, a guy who feels very, very comfortable, of course, here at the Santee Cooper oh, Lakes. Here he won back here. 2020, last year, he was in third place with 98 pounds. So I mean, how could a fishery be more friendly to an angler than that? Yeah, getting it done on a Megabass Kanata IU jerkbait. 
Got to see a lot of his mega live footage earlier today from there. Steve Kennedy starting on the Shad Spawn right around the 95 bridge. Kept it honest for, no, I think it's fair to say Tommy kept it honest for about two hours. Said he got one bite around the bridge in practice. And Kennedy, one of the anglers coming into today, really, really worried about catching a limit of bass, a five bass limit. That is really the theme of this event. It is the haves and the have not. Steve Kennedy making his way down to Moultrie, catching a good one here during our midday break. Steve Kennedy 20th at Murray last week. Good, good week there. Started the season out with a fifth place, a top five at Okeechobee, then followed it up with a 100th at Seminole. So he'll Actually, go on runs like Tommy, that. that Oh, that was the good one, not the one before. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, from I there. Think, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, but I don't even know what's what all excitement. <laughs> Brandon, you look at him can't go. give me a joke. <laughs> Taking a look at Brandon Cobb right here. Pretty much Santee Cooper 101, throwing a wacky rig at Cypress Trees on the lower end of Marion. And he said he shook off about 15 bass. Again, another angler with a very slow practice. Cobb, your angler of the year leader, not getting a lot of bites, but definitely the right ones here today. Brandon Cobb with an impeccable start to the season. Top 10 at Okeechobee. Obviously, you need to show up in your home state, Tommy. Whenever you get lakes near your home, you better show up big time. And Cobb with a sixth last week, right? He is our angler of the year leader. Won twice during his. Uh, won two Elite Series events his rookie season. Oh, man. Here's a former Rookie of the Year, Drew Cook, who is our defending it, champion, 105 and a half pounds last year. Yes, Drew Cook starting in the Potato Creek area. Sat on this one right here for about 45 minutes, and I think the one thing that's really surprising, it's been a little bit slow for Drew Cook and Drew Benton that you haven't seen a six to eight pounder yet for Cook. The reason why I say that is he said he had about a half dozen of them marked that he got to look at yesterday so pretty important afternoon for cook and benton who have been looking at him but slowly getting up around that 20 pound mark for drew cook drew cook fifth and angler of the year points coming in here and now uh, now that he's gained the top five here he has moved up that list probably another point or two so what a season to a guy who almost always has a great season and great to have you with us here as we continue with the Bassmaster Live, a live coverage of this uh, AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper. We're here in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon with Ronnie and Such and Z. Uh, Z out there today watching Drew Cook be able to turn it around. Does this sort of change the landscape a little bit in your mind of what's possible, what's doable, at least the first couple of days here? Uh, you know, I, I, I we started off the broadcast today. I think this is going to be, especially be, being near the tail end of the spawn, that it's going to be one of those you're going to see the best sight fish days one and days two and it's who can actually crack the code who's actually out there fishing i think the one cool thing that has transpired throughout to today is that moultrie has been a much bigger player than we have seen in years past and it looks like we're definitely going to have at least one or two cameras down there for day two so look for moultrie to be a little bit bigger of a player i think looking into tomorrow I want to see with the leaders who actually is just out fishing and not looking at them. All right, Ronnie, what are you looking for tomorrow and today, the remainder of two hours? I think trying to decipher bash track a little bit. You see some guys pop up with a six or seven pounder, or maybe a guy with three, five pounders. What makes up their big bag for the day? Because some of these guys who do catch a seven pounder and then a bunch of two pounders, that might have been a sight fish. They don't have that to go to the next day. Like you yes. said, some of these guys fishing, we start to see an evened out bag. You can rely on that a little bit more. And as we get to the weekend, like Z said, we're going to see some patterns start to fade and some come back in. So I think all, all four days of this event, we're going to be on our toes on who is kind of ebbing and who is flowing at the top. Yeah, and, and really, I don't think our anglers were goofing around when they said this was going to be a very, very tough event. When you have a camera with Patrick Walters and he is grinding just to get a bite, it really tells you that it is not the easiest proposition on this lake right now. And Suits, let me ask you, uh, talk about, uh, well, go ahead, you got something. I know you well, got I got a big 50, 50 fish over four pounds right now. Daryl Gleason is our Phoenix Boats big, big bass leader at 7'6", and Caleb Kufall. Great here last year, 
All right. He was that, struggling too all day, and then bam, a 7 4, and he's back in the mix. That's the biggest thing is who's going to save their day, and we think maybe they have momentum, but really it was not as clean as it looks on paper. You know, yes. it's just hard yes. to wait for that big, big than anything yes. else, yeah. for sure. Well, let's take a look at our anglers. Uh, these are the anglers we're in the boat with all day long. That's the way they're laid out there. Moultrie. Why are we have so many people? You you talked about it too. You had a theory about why we have more people in Moultrie this year, right? Well, well, just talking to some people that live around there, we haven't we've had lower levels. Not like it's been in drought or something, but they just kept the lake a little lower. And some of these areas where in Moultrie it seems like they spread out. You know, you'll you'll go like a mile between the you'll go a mile between the next bass because the water's low and they just disperse. But with more water, you start to see places like the hatchery show back up and Moultrie and places that I guess we'd see in 06 when I guess the water levels were a little higher. But uh, looking at the map just a minute ago, a like quarter of, of the field is in Moultrie, which That's is exponentially more than we've, we've ever not had. seen that. No, we've not seen that. At least four of our top Modern ten. Era. Yeah. That's uh, that four boxes clockwise from top left Kennedy and Polinick, uh, Walters and Cobb. Walters is last without a fish. Wow. Now, I wow. Can't, I can't get my head around that. That is, that is not, it's hard to comprehend to be honest with you. And Luke Palmer who had our VMC monster bag last year, 33 pounds, just caught his first two moments ago. Chase it, they just won't get it. Jason Christie with just one two pounder. Corey Johnston, wow. who got top five recently here. 83rd with two for four pounds. Greg Hackney, four for four pounds. That's probably a little low. It's hard to have four one pounders, but. And a pretty big hats off to Brandon Cobb doing what he did today, throwing a wacky worm at cypress trees on Marion. You know, a lot of times you kind of you want a little bit of that sun to really set them up, get them tight to those cypress trees. And for him to do what he did earlier today with a lot of fog, a lot of low light where fish tend to roam off of them. That's pretty that obvious why you're leading angler of the year. It's crazy. And Carl being fifth place, he's second for AOI right now. Drew Cook is third, standing in fourth. And Daryl Gleason just filled his limit. He's jumped up to third place, making Mark Menendez and Steve Kennedy the highest guys with only four fish. They're 13th and 14th. Yeah, when you see Steve Kennedy, Brandon Polinick, Patrick Walters on Santee Cooper, none of them have a limit. It is not easy right now. I guess I should've just went up there and tried to get it if they're not. Real hard to do this without power poles. It'll take forever. Have to slow down way before each tree. Tommy, what do you say we play the "What will it take" game? What's it going to take to get a so camera? One fish on about every hundred. Hmm. We need to start keeping a record on this to see how close we get because we quality we just, has surprised you know, me today. Sometimes we three, nail it. Three good bites. I thought I'd catch a lot. Thought I'd actually catch more than I'm catching, but I thought it'd be two pounders, two and a half. I'm saying actually, twenty-two. Many, but I've caught some big ones, so I'll take that. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. 
I like that. 21, 21, 8. 21, 8. All right. Yeah. Ronnie? I like that a lot, Tommy. Uh, it was 22 even last week. Was it? To get, get the six. sixth? Okay. Um, well, the top of the leaderboard looks very much like day one. It's already there. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. That's what's crazy is the top of the leaderboard is that, and 10th place is 17, and I that's know, what went, yeah, that's what just 50th was. falls off a wow. cliff after Holy that. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, I'll go 22, four. Okay. I'm just going to okay. sandwich you between Z. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Such? Uh, I'll go, I'll do the under. <laughs> like 11? <laughs> like 2014. Oh, okay. All right. Such a great year. Been making multiple casts of the trees, but in all honesty, majority of them kind of eat it when you get it up there, or they don't. I believe that one's going to get hung. We have a new unofficial, according to Bash Track, as it stands right now at this complete minute, a new Rookie of the Year leader with Bryant Smith okay. passing Kyoya Fujita by a point. All right. He's had a really wow. strong few right. events, so he's okay. up to 11th in AOI. So that means we're going to have two to four rookies within the top 15 of AOI having a shot. Every year it seems That's like awesome. it's to win That's... Rookie of the Year, you have to get a top 10 in AOI, just oh, like yeah. Jay Shakira did, just like Drew Cook did in the past. And Will Davis is right behind Fujita, Ronnie. Yeah. 11, 12, 13. David Gaston should be around there too. Brandon Cobb trying to sneak up on one. Cypress Tree lurker over there, so we'll check in with that. Now we got another rookie. Speaking of rookies, we got a rookie that's been hanging in there in second place. Kyle Norsetter from Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. Came here via the, the, the Central Opens last year. Finished third, comes down from Wisconsin, finishes third at Rayburn and eighth on the Red River. That's he's got some skills. It's it's Undeniable. All these guys have skills. We'll scope them out when we get back. The AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Oh, that was awkward, but I got her. Anyway, I like hunting for individual big fish. Typically, it only takes one big fish to get a check. Some, you know, really good tournaments, it may take two, one a day, but that's all it takes to get you over that cut line. So, you know, if I get the opportunity, I would prefer to go fish for that one big bite and take whatever else comes, because. You know, they're going to be the same as everybody else's. But yeah, you, if you want to get paid, you got to catch one big one usually. Come on, give me some. Steve Kennedy there, given his approach on Santee Cooper, he's one that we need to listen to. Three times here with the Elite Series and three great finishes for him. He's one of the guys with a Century Club belt under his wraps here at Santee Cooper as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, and I really am just going to go straight to the point about Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. This season has not been what I'd hoped it'd be through three events, through four events counting the Classic, but this is the week we turn it around. Uh, obviously, you could go with the high percentage folks, the people you would consider chalk possibly. Maybe you go with some guys trending in the right direction. Maybe some, you know, uh, under the radar picks. So I kind of did a little bit of mixture of all of that. Matt Airy and Bucket A, there's a lot of different eyes you could put there. You could put Patrick Walters. You could go with Brandon Cobb, some guys from the home state, or some guys that have done well at Santee in the past. But Matt Airy, the last two Elite Series events, he's had a big bass of the day or a big bass of the whole event. I'm relying on him to kind of harness that big bass mojo. He's on a roll there with that. Jay Shakur in an uncertain bucket B for me. There's a lot of different figures in bucket B you could have gone with, but some that I thought were too risky compared to others. I went with Jay Shakur. He seems rock solid down south compared to most rookies uh, and second year anglers. He seems just comfortable at a place like Santee Cooper. He got off to a good start this morning. 
John Cruz, middle of the road season so far. He wants to turn it around. He didn't do too hot at Lake Murray. Hardly ever do we see John Cruz in back to back weeks miss both cuts. I'd expect him to try to sneak up and make the cut this week. Buddy Gross is one that really needs a good one this week. And, and I really thought with the influx of eelgrass that somebody like Buddy Gross would be a lot more comfortable maybe than he would have been in a complete sight fishing derby here like last year. So Buddy Gross, he needs a good one to turn his season around kind of below expectations for places like Okeechobee, Seminole, uh, Lake Murray, places that we probably thought he would probably catch him, has not caught him this year. And then in Bucket E, looking at Bucket E, I went with an outlier. I went with, outlier. I went with a rookie who's had a little bit of a tough season so far, Kyle Norsetter. But watching him last year, when it was all on the line at Sam Rayburn, he was in 10th place going in the final day. He had to finish above 7th or 8th on that final day to make the Elite Series. And boy, did he ever. He jumped all the way up and finished 3rd to make the Elite Series. Showed up clutch there. I think that this was going to be a good event for him. Plus, with the way Bucket E sets out, if you didn't want to pick someone like Brian New that's 50% owned in Bucket E, you could go with a lower percentage guy, but there are a lot of northern anglers in Bucket E, so you might want to save those for the northern swing in a couple events. I wanted to go with a guy who's from up north, but fishes like a southern angler. Guys in Wisconsin seem to do well at, the, at Santee Cooper. Kyle Norris had already proven that this morning, so feeling good about that. The, the turnaround starts now, Thomas. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Norris said are definitely the jewel in your crown if you still, in fact, had possession of the crown. Yes. Which you don't. I, I have <laughs> relinquished <laughs> it in fantasy fishing. I have given it away, no doubt. Okay. All right. Well, hey, listen, that that is a bold move going. Kyle Norsetter over Brian New yeah. on Santee Cooper. I got to give that. That is a roll of the dice right there. Right here, taking a look. Your top 20 anglers spread out across Marion and Moultrie. Obviously, a lot more attention on the bottom lake this time around. For the first time, starting to see Marion up lake firing a little bit. Guys like Mark Menendez, Jamie Hartman starting to put together solid limits of bass. So we get on the water right now, taking a look at Seth Fighter from Drew Cook's boat. 100% avoided Brian New. Yep. Zone wow. because of the bad taste in my mouth the last couple times he's supposed to catch him supposed to catch him in Seminole oh, I got, I got supposed to catch him at Murray and had right not I don't know pounds, why but... he's in a funk this year but wanted to avoid that I you caught the seven pounder this morning like I, I thought that you caught the male and, and the female off this bed so I just just assumed that you caught it and, and cock, cock came over here and caught it I was like God Almighty. No, I found one, one, one. Um, it was a six pounder, but. Ronnie, did you consider Wes Logan? He just caught a six and a quarter. He's up to 18th place with 15 and a half. Was Wes in bucket E? No, no, no. Okay, then no. He was like. Uh, Kyle Jesse picked him, no? C. He was 50 something in AOI, now he's 39th. He stays there. <laughs> Having a little bit of a turnaround season for him. Yes. I'm just gonna idle this over to there and I'm gonna go through that that little pocket right there real quick. And uh, and then we're gonna go to uh to that other pocket. Uh, it's not going as planned. Um, you know, I've only caught one female. Uh, you got a pretty decent bag just for him. everywhere else except for Santee Cooper, um, especially when they're spawning. So we got some work to do. Uh, we got to get one more female. And uh, to make that happen, we need to burn the bank up. That's what we're fixing to do. I'm gonna watch some fishing and hope for them big ones, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I hope they show That's up. That's what we're doing, no doubt. <laughs>
think we're going to see many anglers that do not fill out their five bass limit today on the stage with Mercer the way it's setting up right now. We do not have a ton of fishing time left. No, we're looking at an hour and a half max for uh, first flight guys. Yeah, every couple minutes the flights go up and change. So I think it's 3, 3.30, 4, 4.30 for the four flights. Eastern time, that is. I keep shorting it just a little bit. Save some power. Really? I feel like there's a definitive line, so I, I wasn't necessarily as shocked to hear about Cobb's lack of tournaments here. It's kind of like Arkansas, is you've got the hot springs folks who fish the, the dock lakes and the clearer lakes, and then you have the Arkansas river folks. Right. And you know, southeast quadrant, yeah, Not you have the far away from each other either. No, and they and they stick to their lakes. And in South Carolina, there's a ton of tournament league, the whole Savannah River chain, you can have a whole tournament league that only does those lakes and it ties up all your time. And then you've got the guys who are, you know, you could fish Santee, all five of your tournaments for the season and, and never wander westward and they never wander eastward. But with as good as it is, I, there should be plenty of fun fishing days for guys like Brian New and Brandon Cobb in this region, you would think. Cobb said besides the Elite Series tournaments that he fished here, really the only experience he has is coming here to sight fish. And that is it. That's crazy. Hmm. Which if you want to catch your biggest of your life, that's probably a good time. Yeah, that's a good bet, I suppose. Did he say when he comes to when he came to sight fish, mm -hmm. was it the earlier in March, late February, early March, or was it around I the didn't, April? I don't know. I didn't I didn't ask time wise, but you know, he just said, I, I just do not have a lot of tournament experience on this lake outside of the times that I came to sight fish just for fun back in my college days. That was a nice one. We'll roll around and check on that one. Big old ball of fry over there. And one of the things we talked about this morning, Drew Cook saying days one and two of practice this week, he was amazed. He said they they must have got after it really hard on the beds here the last couple of weeks because there was a crazy amount of fry in Potato mm -hmm. Creek. Rick Clown with a five pounder got inside our top 50. He's got around 10 pounds. All right. 10 and a half. Four fish. Okay, cool, bro. Never to be seen again. Man, with this sun, I really need to get back to that pocket.
Andrew Cook on the hunt. Patrick Walters trying to get on the board. Steve Kennedy trying to move up on this day. Day number one. That's the standings right there unofficially with Matt Robertson. Still on top, the rookie Kyle Norseth. Holding tight in there behind. Those two with a little separation from everyone else, including Daryl Gleason, Bryant Smith, Drew Cook, Carl Jockamson, Brandon Cobb, Ray Hanselman, Brian New coming back this week, and Chris Johnston. And we've got about an hour and 20, maybe an hour and 15 minutes for our first flight guys to fish before their day is done. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Having an extended stay in the, the Palmetto State of South Carolina here for two tournaments. Murray was completed last Sunday. And today, on Thursday, we are well into, in fact, into the last couple of hours of fishing time here on Lake Santee Cooper. A full field of 104 <laughs> anglers out there today. And amongst our top 10, we can find uh, positions one, two, and three in our Progressive Angler of the Year race. Uh, we can tell you who that is in just a few minutes here. Let's get back out to Drew Benton, our, our winner from in dramatic fashion from last week at Lake Murray, coming from 10th place, last man in on Championship Sunday, and he pulls it off, gets his second Elite Series victory. Get rid of that 12-incher. I knew he was a little one, but his girlfriend wasn't there, so what he gets. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. Oh, uh, I'm we'll have to be on the idle because we're going to idle out of here. Right now. Well, that keeper right there should put Drew Benton uh, okay. into the top 30 after a, like Drew Cook, a slow start to his day today. Yeah, and Drew Benton getting, getting out of the Potato right Creek area that. that he started in, starting to fish. A lot more pockets off the main lake on the south side of Marion. Hopefully, there are some fish in there. Wanting to bite this. Well, very surprising. We've said this to <laughs> excess already today, but anyway, the man with the most local knowledge, fish. Patrick Walter, still two, waiting on fish. Five somethings. And yes. Two pushing three, but uh, but I've been like two hours without a bite. I caught, yeah, I caught two on a swim bait within what ten minutes of each other, and and then back to back cast on one tree, and then can't say I've had another keeper bite. I told you it was tough. But we're getting, anyway, there's some in here. We're gonna get around one. We still got a good hour to fish without hurting ourselves going in. And uh, hopefully we're gonna put it in front of one that wants to eat. I have a hard time believing we hadn't put it in front of a few. But, but for whatever reason, they're not biting right now. Yeah, I got the impression they were biting this morning with all that overcast and stuff. Now they're, <laughs> it's siesta time. <laughs> but they're supposed to set up under one of these bushy trees and and hit the Cinco. Supposed to. It's all I got. <laughs> I told you it was brutal. Somebody caught my others. I had a a big pair on the bed. I know, you know, I know where a couple other areas are with fish. But... but I don't think they're any better than the ones that are here. I don't know. 
tickled to have what I have. <laughs> But I would love to get one more. Begging. Steve Kennedy with three Elite Series wins, dating back to second year of the Elite Series, 2007, Clear Lake, California, where he set the record for four days of fishing at that time. There's one at West Point. What was that, like 11, 12? Yeah, 2011, 2011, 2011 in uh, Dardanelle, 2017 in Arkansas. It was cool to listen to that interview where he was talking about the importance of just one bite, one big bite per tournament. And Steve comes across, we've talked about this, happy-go-lucky, which he is. Steve is an incredibly smart human being. Oh, absolutely. Engineer by, like, by trade, yeah. He, absolutely. Yeah, he knows how things work, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, There's a lot of times, right though, when he weighs in with Mercer, he, it doesn't look like he knows what to do with his hands. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just being honest. Well, I don't, <laughs> but, that's another issue there. I, yeah. That's, it, it doesn't, that's no I, see, I enjoy that kind of stuff. I, I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, he likes him. There's a couple of fish here. No, no, no. Kennedy said that about but I'll tell you uh, it, like an interesting thing, Tommy, style. that and he is the only angler that does this throughout the years. He's very open with whether it's coming into a tournament where we have a camera on him or, or he's a leader of a tournament. And I and I appreciate this for the viewer. Steve will go to lengths to talk about what he's he doesn't like to talk about exact lures at times more so now than say a decade ago mm -hmm. but he what is very interesting is he'll go through how he caught him what his game plan is and he does this a lot he will either text or call an hour before takeoff if he changes his mind with his game plan oh. so we can pass it on to the viewers on Bassmaster very, Life. It's very that, cool. That's rare, I would think, right? <laughs> as in never with anybody else. <laughs> yes, it's as rare as never. I got a mullet glide bait in here. You think I want to get it out? It's true, I do. Oh. At this point in the day, Z, what's what's going through Walter's mind? What's a weight? I mean, is he just, just going to exactly try to get to 10 pounds to today? Like, you know, I mean, he still wants to try to swing probably, but your 10 pounds would probably be a dang good day for him right now. We have seen this happen before with local anglers yep. on their home yep. bodies of water it's true that it is not it is not a bad day it's a catastrophic day I mean, this is not the first it's not like this the first time that we've seen this happen um and, and in all honesty it's hard to describe but and the weird thing ronnie is patrick walters seemed like he had which is normal. He had pretty good confidence coming into today, and he said, "I'm going to do Santee 101." Now he has got, I've got he has gotten away from that. Santee 101 is what Brandon Cobb has done all day long. Yeah. Um, Patrick started doing that, and so two hours in, hour pulled the plug on it. Fish. Started yeah. the day 16th in AOI, tying for last. 
which is 104th. He's fallen to 49th. Well, he has zero points. points. If you don't catch a bass, you don't get a point, just even if you showed up. So the second he gets a fish, he'll actually be able to say, hey, I'm at the event. He's is, got last yeah. check-in, though. He's got till 430 today. Yeah. That's just maybe a saving grace. You say it, it's happened, but it, it happened pretty much last week, Z. I mean, with Brian New, for the most part. It, that, that is a, Tommy, that is a perfect point. Brian New was a, a, a favorite to win on Murray, and it was it was not a bad first day. It was a disaster. Yeah. And so far right now, we are seeing the exact same thing with, and you would have, uh, that will be a fantasy fishing wipe buster. Yeah, yeah. A wipeout. For sure. I will say, we said it last week, it's a lot easier truckers to here. have an advantage on a blueback herring lake even in April compared to Santee Cooper in April when they're nope. possibly betting or biting. It's just the equalizer here is a seven, eight pounder. And there it's, you got to catch a bunch of fours and fives, you know, at yeah. times. And so, yeah. Oh, grass. Well, I wanted to bring up the opposite of Kennedy saying you need a big fish. Scott Canterbury's one spot ahead of, of uh, Canterbury's ahead of, of Canterbury, and his biggest fish is a 315. He's got a two. He's got 16 and a half on five fish, and they're all pretty close. Got the pile. Got the pile that I was trying to hit. Got some hard grass. <laughs> Bunch of fish moving around in it too. Okay. Now the leap frog in here is guys are filling out their limits. Chris Aldane's up to 19th. Bill Lowen did it a while ago with a big five pounder. Up to 18th. But you get a. You get a gauge how tough it is. Craig Hackney, a ton of experience on this lake, under five pounds. Mm. Lee Livesey, one of the big best big bass fishermen on our trail. Two bass for three and a half pounds. So that is, you could tell this system right now is off. Yeah. Christy just filled a limit for about eight pounds total. Holy, some big ones in there. And Brandon Pollock, who's been seeing big ones everywhere, but hadn't had a keeper in two hours here. On his, uh, the upper end of the 20s now, or the lower end, I should For the right. Well, we have a slow period. I know we talked about number one pick last week. A lot of folks thinking Bryce Young going yep. to the Panthers. Got a question for you. Okay. We have a lot of SEC fans and obviously Jalen Carter, one of the biggest defensive prospects, but a little bit of off the field trouble. What number does he go tonight? Whew. Yeah. You think he's? I say he goes to the Seahawks. I think he goes okay. five as well. I was gonna say so that's top five. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. Yep. top five. Because if I don't think I, I don't think my Cardinals will draft in the third spot. I think that that pick is moving somewhere. So you'll probably have a quarterback taken at one, three, and probably four to the Colts. So if the Texans don't reach for him and they get like a Will Anderson, then Jalen's gonna be one of the next two or three defensive players chosen. I would imagine five, six, or seven. I, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say five. I do not want the Lions to get him <laughs> at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah, they, they might get. Uh, Ly they might Lions get Witherspoon though. They might get. They may get the DB Witherspoon to replace their uh, 
Um, who did they move off? Who was their? Oh, oh. Um, their DB that just yeah, moved? I'm, I'm blanking. To Atlanta? Yes, I know. I know who you mean. Number it's one the, or two uh, pick. It's the Ohio State guy first from first or second round. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna drive me crazy. I'll figure it out. Jeff Akuda. Akuda, I think. Yes, yes. Well, waiting for the big ones to show up here. Because yeah, you know they you live here. nailed it. Absolutely. Absolutely they live here. I did not link. see only one fish coming off of our midday break happening this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it can, you know, we're back to, uh, we, we had a rare treat last week at, at a lake that never shut down more than 45 seconds at a time. Now we're back into what is it's more like a normal pattern afternoon, a little bit of a slow period in the afternoon. So. We'll learn to we'll relearn to live with that as we take a look at the leaderboard with Roberts, Norsetter, Gleason, Smith, and Cook in the top five. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Day one action. Yeah, a quarter! No way! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Mincota. Getting close to the center point of our season here. Nine events, Bassmaster Elite Series. First three have been very, very interesting so far, and now we're at the Santee Cooper Lakes. We started out down at Okeechobee in Florida with the first time winner, Tyler Rivette. The rookie, Joyce Fuentes, winning at Lake Seminole, and the veteran, Drew Benton, winning last week at Lake Murray. After this, we're gonna go to Alabama, then Texas, and then North to wrap up our season. Moves by very, very quickly sometime. Get down to Patrick it Walters, a story that boy nobody likes. It. No, this is just nope. utility today. Can't explain it. Empty live well right now for Patrick Walters in the bottom end of Moultrie. All that size, besides those couple small ones I caught. But we didn't zero. It was darn looking like it, wasn't it? My goodness. That's insane how tough it's been for me. They're here though, like thick. We just need to really, let me switch with you. I'm using a drop shot right a second, which they have not bit all of practice. But I needed something I could fish faster and get through there a little more effectively. There's the bite firing back up. Gary Klaus just caught a 5-2, Brad Watley a 4-0. Watley was Walters already there. They're pretty good, wasn't he? Got it. Oh, had been. You're gonna be close. You're gonna be close. Don't make it. I think he is. I think he is. Dang it. He got it. <laughs> he wanted it. Fifteen inches. Could get Kennedy up near eighteen thousand in our top ten. Take it. Give me some. Back in there. It's a limit. It's a limit. Let's go practice soon. Keeper. 
Number five, and gonna head we'll back up back to Lake Marion right now. See if there's a female. Brandon Cobb hooked up live. Not big, but I think he's bigger than that one. One's a two four, so he's got to get over. That one got quick. Hey, buddy. Got you. Way bigger than that one. Takes a while to get a bite, but oh, he's barely hooked. Get that out. Get it a little far, but not not dangerously far. Got it. I'll take it. Put him in the better side. He's about to have to. We're about to have to transfer fish after this. Anytime the better side, you have to take him out and put him in the small side. It's always good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Brandon Cobb and Steve Kennedy putting some fish in the boat, doing it with a spinning rod around cypress trees, things like that, that we kind of have seen in the past at Santee Cooper and kind of expected to play. But when you come to Santee Cooper, as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, and when we look at some of the top baits, Mark Zona, you sent us this from Brandon Polinick from practice. It's odd to see at times how a bait like a jerk bait is going to factor at a big bass factory like Santee Cooper, where Grass flipping, tree pitching and skipping are a thing. Big line, big tackle, but this isn't a small jerk bait. Just to kind of detail it for folks, when you think about a 110 size jerk bait, that's a four inches and change size jerk bait. But the one that Brandon Polinick was throwing this morning, I believe you said it was the Kanata Z, that is over six inches, almost six and a half inches. That's a big, big jerk bait, a big profile. And if you're only going to get a couple bites offshore trying to develop a brush pile pattern or trying to do something that no one else is doing a little bit different, it, it pays off to have a bigger than normal jerk bait factor. And so for Brandon Polinick to have that much confidence in practice to send you that and then to see it come to fruition today on Mega Live, uh, that is something that we'll keep an eye on for other patterns other than just the notorious skipping trees with a wacky rig and a spinning rod and then also maybe some of the other traditional things like flipping uh, with big line big baits or even top water that could factor so we'll see as this event changes what baits come into play what baits fade away what patterns rise up and things like that but it's interesting to see him kind of talk that into existence early in this event and it paid off for a couple key ones even though he still has some work to do thank you Ronnie good pick there pictures. Mark Menendez said he had a couple spinning rods made for this event. He just caught a four pounder to get over 20. He's got 20 pounds, 14 ounces, and then third, third place. Third place, man, oh man. This is a map of our locals, our South Carolina anglers. Yeah, and the really neat thing about that, three of them down in Moultrie, three in Marion, and only two of those six in our top 10 right now on official. Yeah, yeah. And we put Jonathan Kelly on the map there. He's not necessarily from South Carolina, no, but, but spent, spent time coastal Carolina. Yes, yeah. spent a lot of his learning years of fishing before qualifying for the Elite Series right down the road from there at Winyah Bay and Santee Cooper at coastal Carolina. So Mark Menendez, we've got Mark Menendez, we've got a rookie in our top five. You got a third year man, a fifth year man, and a the guy, Daryl Gleason, who's been out here three years as well. And looking to upgrade his standing. Well, you showed Todd Auten, and he caught a five and a half pounder, 930 in the morning. It doesn't have a fish since, but his bass track kind of went on the blink around 11. So who knows? He may have more. Well, Patrick Walters, if you're just checking in with us, he's been away for a few minutes. He he has put a keeper in the live well, which is a, kind of a relief. Don't want to see him blank today. You could see how Walters was relieved to catch one, but also almost determined and hopeful 
at how stacked up they were that he could get right in a hurry and all of a sudden you get to weigh in and like nothing happened. He yeah. comes in with 15 <laughs> pounds or something today. Oh, that's cool. You know, like, oh, we're all good. For, for about seven hours there, I was worried, but we're good now, you know, kind of thing. Why was your heart monitor way up? <laughs> it's not when, it's how many. Drew Cook making the comment about an hour ago that he's one big female away from being kind of where he wanted to be weight-wise for the day. I told you, it's brutal. Brutal. And I've been here a bunch of times this time of year. I mean, really. And done really well doing this. And they're not here. I don't understand where they are in their cycle, I don't. They're obviously out on that eelgrass or beyond because they're not up here. And the ones that up here are, are spawning, which is <laughs> just odd. <laughs> I'll say it again, there's no brim beds, there's very little shed spawn. I may fish like this tomorrow, just give him two seconds. If he's there, get it, if not. That one jumped all over it when I got it near him. You know what? And those other two jumped on it pretty good. Walters might have to measure that one. I think he just barely, maybe just barely. Not gonna take a chance. Too early to remind you that uh, as soon as first flight wraps up their fishing at 3 o'clock, uh, shortly thereafter, they will crank up the way and Dave Mercer will get it up and running. We'll weigh our full field and they'll all fish again tomorrow. We got 18 pounds, dude. <laughs> It's solid, yeah. It's, it's not that 25 to 30 that somebody's gonna have, but it's decent. I'll bet money it's above average. <laughs> Wait, I did, didn't I? <laughs> like five grand. <laughs> I mean, a T-I-M-E yeah, out there yeah. with Kennedy right now. I hope it's way above average, because <laughs> I'm gonna need help tomorrow. Got my my bait back too. That'd be better than I two twelve. Looks like it might be. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. God, I didn't know this thing was that skinny. Nice. But I mean, when you saw him like that, it was like, oh man, that's like a four and a half five pounder.
Got you, sucker. Gonna break out the old fairy wand cliffhanger. But I got it. Whatever yeah. worked. Yeah. About one cast with that spinning rod right there. Don't see that very often not, not with Drew good. Cook when he's <laughs> fishing for spawners. That afforded him about a one pound upgrade right there. So uh, that'll put him up in the top four. But what a comeback on the day for Drew Cook, our defending champion here. Look at that top 10. We got a wide array of what in the world they could be doing to be successful this week, where they're from in the country. It I is know, all kinds of their disorders. ages. It's all, yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit of everything. A little bit of everything. We like it that way. Matt Robertson leading the way still, 25 and a half pounds, same as he had on day one last week. Yeah! A daughter! No way! Live coverage of the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Getting close to the tail end of our first of four days of fishing to make up the AFCO Bassmaster Elite at the Santee Cooper Lakes here, the storied Santee Cooper Lakes, famous for big, big bass. We've seen a few of those today, still waiting for some more big ones to show up for sure. And uh, we're gonna take you back out on the water right now. The guy who caught the, caught the biggest bag of all last week at Lake Murray. Did it in a dramatic fashion, coming from 10th spot on Championship Sunday to win the whole shooting match. Drew Benton of Georgia. Yeah. Drew Benton pretty much living in the Potato Creek area, also kinda around Rock Pond a little bit earlier today. A little one. Got him out of the way. She might move up there and I can catch her. I don't know. I know he wasn't very big. Fighting frog, something we see with him and Drew Cook nonstop when they're sight fishing. Gonna get back down to Moultrie right now. Patrick Walters, one bass. It's live well. Mark Manette has just called up to 21 pounds, four ounces. Wow. About six ounce gained on his last fish. It's not that great. Golly, it's gonna be a different fish. What the heck? Actually, that is fish number three, potentially, has one barely keeper in his live well. What is going on here? Wow. <laughs> exactly. Oh, time's wasting. Yeah. Okay. Our 61st fish over four pounds. Cole Sands, a five and a half pounder. He's got 16 on the day. He's in 18th place. Wow. Pretty good move. He's got him sandwiched. He started that's, with a five and a half pounder this morning. That's huge for him. He made the cut at Seminole. I believe he barely missed the cut at Murray. And then after getting in the 100s at Okeechobee to start your elite season, getting basically no points to start his elite career, he's Cole Sands has been trying to gain points back every single event, so. He started 88th, rounding, if he finishes 18th, he'll get him about 70th. So that's a pretty good jump. We'll Working start up. to get into that yeah. classic cut so line. Especially because I picked him for Rookie of the Year, and I have been severely let down. Yeah. Sort of like the Kyle Norsetter early. story. Early. Same yeah. sort of numbers as Norsetter. Yeah. yeah, it is early. If you get in the bottom 10 or 12 in an elite event, you just don't get that many points for it, and it kills your nine-event season when you just don't get hardly anything for a full week of work. 
you have to avoid the big numbers. Very rarely can someone come yeah. back from an from an 80 something at any point. I like season. to always try to explain the points race is that every one of these anglers has the potential and the ability to get a top 20, but a good portion of our field has figured out how to not have a bottom 20, which is what kills you. A top 20 helps you, but a bottom 20 hurts you more than a top 20 helps. Yes. We've yeah. talked about this, right? What does it take to average in a tournament to get in the classic every year? About a 50th, 45th? I mean, that makes sense. About half the people in the elites make the classic, and, you know, it would be about that average, but every year it kind of fluctuates a little bit. You know? So you got to have a couple top tens if you have one or two of those I'd 80s say, and 90s. I'd say the average is going to go up because having everyone fish all nine opens for the EQ, you're going to have a lot less elite guys double up with wins there, so the field should not go down the list as far. So it may, may be a higher average to make it. I'm sure folks are hoping uh, Gustafson climbs inside the Classic Cup. I don't know if I can run right here. A bunch of stumps on this flat. I'm not gonna run. Deep right here, but it gets shallow. No, that's just trees. And unofficially, we have Brandon Cobb in our top six. We'll obviously be with the other leaders tomorrow. Now, I think you nailed it, Ronnie. We'll be very cool to see what they did the different. <laughs> what in the world? Here's a huge late day get catch. Luke Palmer, six pounder. It's over 10 pounds when he was stuck in the 80s, close wow. to 90. Yeah, these don't work this time, they, they're no good. And Z, I'll say this is almost, we almost did it at Murray, but the weights were so stacked. I think our top finisher was right at 10th place or so. Didn't get a camera for day two, but eh, we'll have another event where one, if not maybe two or in the top 10 for our guys from day one, which is always a good representation that yeah, have yeah, that happen. Absolutely. Looks like running in. Well, as we get near the end of fishing here on day number one, Bassmaster oh. Live on Santee Cooper Lakes. Our power pole replay of the day is going to be what happened earlier today. Brandon Polinick still looking to fill out his five bass limit. Walked us through everything that was going on with his Mega Live. And this fish reacting, coming out of a brush pile. And boy, mm -hmm. not a lot of quantity, but the quality has been there for. Brandon Polinick, who I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, is still sitting on three fish. I think that's right. Mega three Bass Kanata IU, a big, bigger profile jerk bait. Power pole replay of the day. Brandon Polinick. Just outside of the top 30 now. 31st place is Brandon Polinick. Seems like it's going to be one of those, Tommy, where a guy comes in and he's 19th on the leaderboard after day one and everyone in his comments is applauding him and he knows he only caught a he had a six pounder and and some tiny one and he was thankful to be in 19th and yeah. not 68th be a few incidents of that yeah, yeah. nice one
the two Drews, and they were that far away from each other during the course of this day. And if you really look at what Drew Cook has done in that Potato Creek area, he's lived there all day long, sitting right now over 20 pounds. It's not like if you fished in that area, decided to sight fish in there, that you caught him. Corey Johnston's been in there all day. We saw David Mullins right next to Cook's boat. It's not like if you just put your trolling motor down, hey, you're going to stumble across 15 to 20 pounds of spawners. That is not the case where Drew Cook won this tournament last year. Chris Saldane just that? landed a five pounder. He's over 18 10, ninth place. Wow. Big move there. Like 13? Huh? Like 13 or 14? Oh, what you got? Almost 21. I found a six pounder. Either they were gone or couldn't catch them. My big one was there. And uh, I hooked the male and he come off. And then I, I caught the male and threw him back. And uh, she, she was playing ball for a little bit and then she was over it. Yeah. This one here, I caught the male this morning. Couldn't catch her. Came back, she has another male and I done caught him. Really? I can't catch her. Yeah. Where I can see. Cook in fourth place in the tournament, Both those third big place. Ones. And the male Points. gone in that pond fourth across. Third. Yep. Found a new one. Caught the male, put him back. She still won't bite. She won't stay on the bed. It's the weirdest, the weirdest sight fish. It's a good catch. Paul McSosprey. Yeah. Did you see this one, Benton? Yeah. Did you mess with it at all? I messed with it this morning. I haven't messed with it since. We'll spend the rest of our time right here. Boy, you would not want to be a spawner in the pocket with them, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, nah. man. You need a crash I'm not helmet. Kidding. <laughs> yeah, you talk about something that would suck. Oh. I think it might be garden fry. Is it in there? Yeah. I saw this joker this morning, or earlier, excuse me. Pretty sure the camera guys in Ben's boat and Cook's boat are having a time right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna bite. Jake Latondras and David Pennington out there with. Pretty sure Latondras is always with Drew Cook when we're here on Santee Cooper. Yeah. Will Davis just. Completed a limit. He's up to 26th place and 10th overall in AOI, overtaking the rookie of the year lead from Bryant Smith, who's now 12th. We got one, two, and three in AOI currently in our top 10. Brandon Cobb, Drew Cook. Carl's eighth place in yeah. the event. Yeah, Carl Jockinson. 
That's the way it stands right now. Unofficial, not a whole lot of changes in the last several minutes except for uh, Chris Eldane ascending up into our top 10. Bryant Smith, Gleason hanging in there. Brandon Cobb, what a day. Drew Cook, what a comeback day for him. Mark Menendez, Kyle Norsetter, and Matt Robertson. Getting closer and closer. Got one more little segment of fishing for you after we come back. The AFCO Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapala. Welcome into Bassmaster Live. Just the waning moments of day one here at Santee Cooper. Some of these anglers who do not have a limit need to get to work and before they check in. Obviously, we have a couple different flights coming in for the AFCO Bassmaster Leaders. We bring in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Our last Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge hit today, talking about Mercury Drain the Lake. I kind of out, I kind of outlined outlined my Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing Team earlier. Now with Drain the Lake, this is the game mode that I really have come into my own skill wise because when when you pick an angler <laughs> once, you you can only use them one time all year long. So it's kind of you use them and you lose them. And so making it count is important. Uh, this is my lineup this week. I've got five anglers right now inside the top 50 currently. A couple, uh, I think David Gaston's off bass track. He may not have a marshal today. Otherwise, we've got a couple guys in the top 50. The lone guys on here that are not in the top 50 would be Jason Christie and John Cruz. I doubled up on a couple, put Jay Shakira and John Cruz in both of my lineups. I figured this week that Jason Christie would be more suited to have a revenge tour at Santee Cooper compared to last year. Right after the Classic, we had like seven days until we started practice here, and he was obviously still on the high of that and didn't do hot at Santee Cooper. Figured this would be a revenge event. He's still down below the cut line. Maybe a kicker will get him in the mix after today. Meanwhile, guys like Kyle Welcher, Steve Kennedy, both in the top 15 right now. I think Bill Lowen's in the top 25. Jay Shakirat's still in the top 35. So we still have work to be done. But like I said, Z, this is the game mode I was built yeah. for. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can keep it up and, and keep rising up. Well, that's good stuff. And Tommy, of imaginary... <laughs> fantasy not living in reality games what what games do you come into your own uh, it's yeah. actually not imaginary it's it's real it's, it's a real just, thing it's, it's a real, real game you know? it's actually not it's uh, really not real i'm sort of hovering above all of them right now and trying to pick one that i can excel at i don't i don't see any prospects I remember back our first year when we were covering tournaments, back when we were in that hotel room at Amistad, killing it with Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Missed. Right. Yeah. Warlock. <laughs> now the fishing looks like I'll tank battle. Piles in here, run back by the ramp, look yes, like it is. Really need space invaders. Yeah, space invaders. Yeah, see the personal really space need invaders. two more bites. I don't care how they come about. These guys want to play Donkey Kong. <laughs> Catch them a donkey, Ronnie. Sounds good. Oh boy. Oh boy. A little bit surprised on the Brandon Polinick thing. Kind of thought this morning in the first yeah. 90 minutes, two hours, he was kind of heading towards 20 pounds pretty easy, and that has not been the case. He, he can find, you know, they, these guys can find. It's just some days you cannot make them bite. I think it's a... And it goes to show. We've seen Patrick Walters the last three hours staring at his graph on a quote-unquote loaded offshore spot no bite yet we're yeah yet they're either very small and only one solid keeper to show yes. for it you know it's not an end-all be-all now here's what's interesting this is the same spot drew benton was in fishing for this female about 20 minutes ago mm -hmm. it absolutely is the same fish wow benton caught the male <laughs> about a half hour ago. Oh, right, yeah, 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 it is that spot, yeah. Don't 
they're kind of like Corey and Chris Johnston, but not related the way they work together. Yeah. <laughs> I expected those guys to do well here. I did too. I mean, yeah. the grass. I think Chris is hanging in shallow. there. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Chris did spend some time in the top ten today. Corey's had a rough day. Yeah. Chris is over 17, almost 18. Which is weird because I think Corey got third in 2020 and fifth in 2022. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, a, yeah he's here. He's a hand here, has been. Yeah, Corey was fifth last year. Yep, that's what I said. And then third in 2020 for the fall event. And right now, Corey's 54. He's got 10 and a half. Yeah, limit though. Fujita is 50th right now with 11, two, 11 pounds, 2 ounces on three fish. Hmm. Seems like this event, most likely Lay Lake and the Sabine River, this midsection hmm. of our season, events four, five, and six are really going to be X factors for the Angler of the Year race, where we could see those guys who have Stuff done without good finishes in the 70s and 80s off, count to gain some steam a little bit. And and hop it. Maybe the top 10 looks co totally different next week. Doing pretty good on four plus pound bass. Bob Downey just caught a 4-0, only his second fish, but 65th la last week on Murray. Oh. It's 75 on day one. Bob Downey. Keep looking at Daryl Gleason's bag, 7-6. Our Phoenix Boats Big Bass, a 6-5, and then he's got a couple two-pounders and a one-and-a-half pounder, and he's 19 and a half. He could he could be near that 30-pound mark with a couple good bites. Mm. Well, Steve Kennedy was not playing last night when he said this tournament at the end of the day one weigh-in was going to look very, very top-heavy right, and watching Bass track all day. That is gonna come true as fact from Steve Kennedy. Yeah, you you got the top twenty, and then it falls off a cliff pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Runs right down the bank. It's a nice fish. Yeah. Yeah, that pretty was, good one. He was a good looking gator right there. Talking about scare the Oof. fire out of you. Yeah. Come get it. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> it's that time of day, Tommy. It's been that. Yes, afternoon. it is. It's it's you know you. Stop. Laughing, crying, all the emotions come out. Benton just put on the brakes big time. One but big it'll, catch, maybe. It will be cool to see your anglers that have been successful today, what they did to get there tomorrow yes. morning. We'll have all the info. Robertson, Norsetter, Menendez. You want to see what Carl was doing out there today? become a factor. Angler of the year race for sure. Time. Nice one. 
Probably gonna be spooky. Well, we had heard coming into this tournament, talking to some of the best fishermen on the Bassmaster Elite Series. This one was gonna be a handful. Got to talk to guys like Seth Fighter, who said it was one of the toughest practices he has had on the Bassmaster Elite Series in his career. In his career. Well, we got to see Number some big one? ones. Wow. Angler of the Year leader, Brandon Cobb, getting it done with a nice, solid limit in the boat. Going to be an interesting event going into day two here on Santa Cooper Lakes. May get to be with Steve Kennedy tomorrow. I don't really know. Not sure about that. It's been fun being with him today. God almighty, I can't believe that thing was that big. Just a little. True Cook, a good bet to be uh, in the boat with him tomorrow. That, that will be good. Took him a while to get it dialed in, but he did. Now a couple big ones earlier today with Brandon Polinick, and this will be an interesting way in for sure with Dave Mercer. Day number one, Santee Cooper Lakes. The festivities are going to start to commence here not too long from now. The guys are going to check in. Well, they're starting to check in right. You have to be in right now for the first flight, guys. And the weigh-in will begin shortly, just a few minutes later. So stick around for that if you can, or dip in and dip out. Starting it again right now. Man on the hot seat as he was during the first oh, yeah. day last week. That Yeti Matt hot Roberts. seat is going to be dripping oh, hot today. So steamy and warm. Whoa. We will see you same time, 8 o'clock East AM Eastern time tomorrow with Bassmaster live from Santee Cooper Lakes. We'll see you then.